One, two, one, two. Hello, Red Sox fans. It's Nicholas Moss back. Finally, after three weeks being away from the ballpark. It is a beautiful 25 degree day, July 14th, 2023. The Brantford Red Sox hosting the Guelph Royals at Arnold Anderson Stadium. It's Christmas in July. We have Santa Claus out on the field right now, taking some photos. I wonder if he's going to take the first pitch. I'm not too sure. But should be an exciting game. The Red Sox are looking to go three in a row, winning the last two games. Let's go Red Sox from Arnold Anderson Stadium. I'm Nicholas Moss. And for those of you tuning in, it is a busy week for the Red Sox. Today, obviously, playing against the Guelph Royals at home. Tomorrow, it's an 8 o'clock start against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Then on Sunday, in Kitchener, playing the Kitchener Panthers. That is a 5.15 p.m. start time. And then again on Tuesday against the Guelph Royals at Hastings, uh, Hastings Stadium, 7.30 p.m. start time. And then back at it next weekend, playing Guelph three times within a span of a week. Next Friday, the 21st, 8 o'clock start at Arnold Anderson Stadium, again against Guelph Royals, and then again back in action at Arnold Anderson Stadium on the 22nd against the Hamilton Cardinals, 8 o'clock start. A very busy week for the boys this week. And as, of course, there was that makeup game this past Monday against Toronto Maple Leafs. There was slight rain falling here earlier, so that's why the mound was covered. <laughs> Looks like we might have a sun delay. Might push back the starting time by 15 minutes. It is a gorgeous day. <laughs> Here in Brantford, anyways, but not so much in London. London uh, received some pretty severe weather and uh, rocked the park. Had to be evacuated at Harris Park for a little bit. But as of a half hour ago, the city of London has deemed it safe enough to resume Rock the Park 2023 in London. The Brantford Red Sox were in the red jerseys. And the Guelph Royals were in the Royal Blues for tonight's game. So we take a look around the IBL, other games happening around the league. Hamilton Cardinals are in London to take on the London Majors. That was to be a uh, 7.35 p.m. start, but it's probably been delayed since the weather wasn't really cooperating for any elsewhere activities in London. Games happening tomorrow. The London Majors are in Barry to take on the Barry Baycats. That's a we got a simple treat for you tonight for Christmas Eve. 5 p.m. start. Throwing our and the fish for pants. It's a little chilly. It's 7.30 p.m. And of course, I do with the Maple Leafs in Brantford here at Arnold Anderson Stadium, 8 p.m. Thank you for favorite tonight is the Red Sox second baseman, Taichi Nakamura. 
Die catching the first pitch being thrown by Santa on the mound. Okay. All right, Santa, let's see what you got. So Pretty good opening you pitch. Good for Joey Oaks, ain't it? That is they say, folks, is strike three. Again, it's nice to be back here in uh, Arnold Anderson Stadium to do this broadcast. <laughs> Such a great job in my uh, absence in the last few weeks. And I've so much. I do my best. Ready for the next baseball match. So, if only they had a 125 foot tree on it. It's, oh, yeah. Will be a bit of a delay for tonight's game, but we'll be up in the next 15, 20 minutes, give or take. Andrew's been a very high tech guy lately, bringing his own microphone for the broadcast. Very high tech, I feel like I'm in a studio with Drake. Don't you do Except right? I don't look like Drake. Yes, but uh, you do quite got the fashion, though. That's for sure. Here we go. No. But anyway, it's good to be back, folks. And for those tuning in from Guelph, we thank you for tuning in. And of course, to anyone else who is just wanting to watch a baseball game from around the IBL beyond, uh, I think the furthest that we've had a, a viewer tune in from is Africa. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is the It was the like furthest. South Congo or something like yeah. that. South Congo, and his name, the guy's name is Butch. Sounds like someone that would. Be down in Africa with that be name, but we thank much anyways for tuning in that one one day. But it was it's it's cool and unique to see the outreach with the broadcast here that you know, could be people from just down the road to people being on the other side of the planet. It seems so. It's really cool to see that. We thank everyone for tuning in to all of our broadcasts. Let's go Red Sox from Arnold Anderson Stadium. As we get set, the top of the first inning against the Guelph Royals. Once again, folks, that will be coming up in a few minutes as we got to wait for the sun to go down. First ever stadium where it's not a rain delay, sun delay. Andrew, pass me the starting lineup for your Brantford Red Sox. Batting first, number 24, Matt Fabian. Batting second, number 49, Gus Wilson. Batting third, number 11, Kieran Bowles. Batting fourth, number 12, Jeremy Bayou. Batting fifth, number 25, Nick Burdett. Batting sixth, number 41, Christian Kazemka. Batting seventh, number 31, Justin Murray. Batting eighth. This one's going to be an interesting one, so my apologies if I uh, butcher this one. Batting eighth, number five. Tat, is it Tachi? Tachi Nakamura. Tachi Nakamura. I promise, Tachi, I'll get your name down. And uh, batting nine, number 20, Jesse Fishbaum. And the starting pitcher for the Red Sox tonight, number 32. Jeremiah Sucre. <laughs> and the batting lineup for the Guelph Royals tonight. Batting first, number nine, J.D. Williams. Batting second, number two, Connor Morrow. Batting third, number 40, David Medha. Batting... Hold on, sorry. 94, 35, Malik Collymore is it? Yeah, Collymore. There you go. Uh, batting fifth, number 24, Justin. Is it? Yeah, I understand. Perfect. Uh, batting six, number 28, Ethan Hammond. Batting seven, number 23, Brandon Keyes. Batting eight, nine, number 19, Chris Robinson. Batting ninth, number 98, Kyle Cush. And on the mound for the Royals, number 34, Darren Trek. 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 
My apologies. Trying to get back into baseball names here after three weeks of being absent from the ballpark. It's, uh, they're going to be troublesome. It's, uh, if you don't use your skills, you you have a tendency to lose them, right? It's exactly what happens. You can't use your skills, then so what you're saying there. <laughs> but with that being said, I should be back now full time with Andrew. Uh, Andrew doing an awesome job, like I said during my uh, my absence. But uh, yeah, looking forward to another good get the game tonight against uh, Los Royals and your Brantford Red Sox. How hot do you think that guy was in that Santa suit right now? Because I'm already boiling and I got, you know, the shorts and button up here. I mean, I think he's got it tonight. I think he's got it. I, I think he can survive it. Well, I know. He deserves good things. As soon as a big boy. Oh, yeah. That's me sweating to see a big Santa suit like that. <laughs> Some well for auto fans, and that's team games coming up for you guys on Saturday, July 13th, tomorrow night, 7 30 p.m. You'll be hosting the Future Panthers, and then Tuesday, July 18th at 7 30 p.m. You'll be facing us once again, but in your own territory at 7 30 p.m. And obviously, again, you're coming back to town. You guys really must like us. They do like us. They, yeah, yeah. they just they just want to lose more games to us. It's okay. It's okay. Ooh, hot takes from Andrew. Very hot take from you, buddy. Very hot take. So I, I made a little offer here. I said in the, in my recent absence here that the Red Sox have won the last two games, and he seems to be on a good steady roll here. Great. For the team's sake, if they lose, does that mean that I'm the bad luck team? I don't want to answer that because who knows my answer is going to be, Nicholas? You, you know exactly what my answer is. Sure. You know what? Just for the sake of it, as of right now, based off of where records are at, I'm going to have to say yes. But tonight could very well change that. Thank you, Andrew, for your honest. <laughs> So let's talk about the last two wins. The first win coming Sunday, July 9th, 2 o'clock in game, where the very big cats were in town. We uh, ended up winning that game 20 to 15. That's quite been an impressive uh, victory there. But, uh, what's impressive? I just want to say more. What's more impressive about that game? was the fact that Brantford didn't have one home run in that game, and there was one total home run in that game, and it was a leadoff shot in the first inning by Barry. So it shows you that, okay, well, if that's the case, and the smart base running would have been a factor in that game, and a lot of uh, crucial balls dropping where they needed to be, so that get these runners in advance. That's how that's how the game play. More runs wins the game. Like both teams in that one were a little bit sloppy defensively, but again, more runs wins you the game, and that's what Brantford did. Exactly. Let's do a, a more impressive play. Back this past month there, okay, it was the big tough game between the Toronto Hipwings and the Red Sox. The Red Sox winning that game at home four to three. A tight, very heavily contested, and like you said, wasn't it the pitchers duo since I wasn't here? The pitchers duo indeed ended up going about, I think it was six <laughs> innings without a run, and it was just a crucial pitching change by Toronto that actually ended up not so much helping them. Man. Made a pitching change. Pitcher had gone five shutout innings. They thought, oh, you know what? We got to get a new arm in there. New arm had walked in three guys in a row. Brantford ended up scoring a bunch of unanswered runs. Toronto tried to make a comeback late in the ninth inning. 
didn't quite work out there. And fun fact, Jeremiah Sucre, who is starting tonight's game, got the two-inning save. That's very impressive. No wonder he's getting to start for tonight's game. <laughs> so who's starting that last game? You know? Isaiah, no. Oh. Pulling up his, his stat sheets from last game, folks. <laughs> Danny Howitt ended up with the start. He ended up going seven strong innings, only giving up two runs. One of them earned. It's quite an impressive start by Danny Howitt. Along with six strikeouts, might I have it. Nice. Very good. Now we have the question here from... Oh, is it raining in London or just right? Okay. Uh so yeah, I live in uh near the, the London area, and it just seems to be us that's getting hit. And then uh, Brantford was just to to get a little bit of showers here and there, but it was quite uh it was quite the the look when I left home for tonight's game. It was very dark, and it, you know that green tint sky that you see from time to time. Yeah, yeah. It almost indicates that a tornado might happen. But, uh, yeah, I live in a very interesting area. I'm only like 40 minutes from uh, Lake Erie. Uh, and it, it, it makes very favorable conditions for tornadoes and really intense storms. But in Brantford, it's beautiful. It's sunny. It's completely different. Like, it's a night day. So we are going to be A-OK -okay for tonight's day. The only reason, again, why we haven't started on time, just a bit of a sun delay here as we have the sun coming in right at our bases, but right when that sun goes down, which should be going down here, should be going down here in the next five to ten minutes, and then we'll be able to get kicked off. The backstop full here. Providing excellent sun blockage for my eyes so I can actually see what's going on out there in the field. Pretty decent turnout for tonight's stream here. Um, especially with uh, the, the rain forecast. Oh. I was really surprised. I see a bunch of clouds in the sky. Thought there weren't going to be a lot of people here. We've got a packed house tonight, folks. Yeah, we do. And not only that, but it seems like this entire park's been uh, buzzing tonight. All ball diamonds being utilized. We have probably at least a couple hundred cars in the parking lot. Right? It's only a couple hundred. It is a great night to be down here at Arnold Anderson Stadium and the surrounding fields where minor ball is being played. It's it's always cool when you see a ball diamond like this where it has good professional or semi-professional baseball as you do. But then you have also the minors and uh, minor leagues playing next to you. And it's one of those cool little things where the, the kid on the diamond right now is probably looking over here and saying, one of these days, man, or one, one day in the future, I'll be there. And I bring this up because I was coming down here when I was entering in here to bring up the kid aspect of it and there were a bunch of kids just up there on the fence just down by the Red Sox dugout over there and a lot of them they wanted these wood guys sign their gloves sign a ball sign this and it might be IVL here but these guys got some admirers let me tell you so that's why it's important that you take every day and you give it your all and show you be a good role model because you never know who's looking at you, who's looking up to you. And these players do have quite the influence with not only the fans, but the community as well. Uh, and, and, and we've seen it in years previous, you know, especially in the championship years where the community's really ra rallied behind this team. There is quite the importance with players, not just from Brantford, but from all around the league where, you know, they got to set the standard, be the, the community uh, influencers, and not only that, but representatives when they're on the road. With all of these teams in the IBL, they do a fantastic job in putting our own brand for Red Sox themselves. Even when they're at home or out on the road, even Gulf Royals right here, 
in a couple of kids that come by down here and we'll call the guys for signing stuff for them. And at best, at the end of the day, that's what the game's all about. It's about making sure that the new generation of kids can go in and be like, oh, so my favorite golf player, when he took the time, signed my thing, they're going to continue to love the game. They're going to continue to play the game. They might even become one of these ball players themselves. And not only that, but uh, I had a pleasure of meeting this. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember his name, but he, he operated the scoreboard for one of the games. Um, but he was doing it for high school. And uh, he did an awesome job. And, you know, it's fun to get those kids out and play in the short time and volunteer at a game and see what it's about. And then not only that, but they get to talk to the students. It's a great connection that we can have. And to inspire towards do the above beyond work, do something to do. And Justin and Tara then six the right field. So we have the ops now meeting at one plate with the manager from the dugouts. 28, the left fielder number 19, Chris Robinson. And nice. The second base in the honors. The PA announcement of tonight's game, and he does such a fantastic job. Uh, all PA guys that we have here. here. I, I, I did rank it for myself. Quite the experience. Looking up, great field number 24. It brings you back to your kiddish side, right? Because it's like, it just keeps up in the shop. So, the fourth nine. Sing. Sunday, third, the catcher, Laura Lindon, here is. Heading forth, the designated hitter, number 12, Jeremy. Heading forth, the first baseman, number 25, Nick. Jack. Heading six, the left fielder, number 41, Jim Tusevka. Heading seven, the third baseman, number 31, Justin Murray. Heading eight, the second baseman, number five, Gigi Mikomura. Heading nine, the center fielder, number 20, Jesse Fishbaum. We don't feel that perfect friend we your real friends in. We don't like to be too much explaining. So uh since my last time being uh here helping out with broadcast, the standings have taken a drastic change. Yes, they have, sir. So Toronto Maple Leafs no longer in hurt. And my apologies, folks, again with my absence. Uh, I've been trying to keep in touch with the IBL and try to keep up the dates. So in first place, obviously we still have the uh, the well and Jack fish. Barry Baker's second, Fisher Panthers third, the Hamilton Cardinals fourth, the Toronto Maple Leafs have fifth. And the London Majors seem to still uh, have some struggles, uh, some issues on the offense. After Toronto's latest loss to Brantford, they ended up jumping down the entire two places. Six noise. It just shows one game, right? One game. Exactly. Six and one is the score. 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 For the playing of our national anthem. Here we go for O Canada.
Play ball. By the time the first pitch is thrown in, it's only been a 20 minute delay. So I'll have sun that set a little bit, so it's not quite the batter's eyes. <laughs> By a sucre gets warmed up on the mound. <laughs> the leadoff hitter for the Guelph Royals, number nine, James Williams, taking to the plate. <laughs> I will check the social media of the London majors and see if they're game. Or if they decided to postpone it. About an hour ago, the London Majors have announced on their social media platforms that tonight's game is being postponed. It was in poor field conditions. And I don't doubt that at all. It was quite hard rain. Absolutely. Oh, now about 30 minutes east of London. Fingers. But here in Brantford tonight, folks, we got the sun just setting behind the trees here, and we're ready for a fun night of baseball. J.D. Williams now taking it to the box for the ball foil. Against pro experience is with the Cincinnati Reds, the MILB, from 2015 to 2018, and the Quebec Capitals in the Frontier League of 2019, and now here at the IBL with the Guelph Royals. J.D. Williams usually wears that uh, arm sleeve, but it's fitting for tonight's game as it's Christmas at the park. Very, he definitely planned that. 100% planned. It's a big old candy cane arm. Sue Craig now in with the first pitch of the night. Starts that one, just uh, looked like it was high inside. Ball one. Nice crack, just getting by the shortstop. That will be a base hit for J.D. Williams. That's the left fielder throws that back into the infield. J.D. Williams on first. Shortstop number two, Connor Moore. It looked like for a moment Sucre was uh, trying to deliver those pitches fast, trying to set the pace for the game, and hopefully he was, he was definitely trying to go for a strikeout quick. J.T. Williams, folks, on this team, he's got some speed, so you got to watch out for him on those base paths. Number two, Connor Morrow for the Royals. He sees that first pitch of the at bat as a strike. Is it real? Owen won the count. Sucre against Morrow. That one was looking good, but I guess it was just inside. It's one and one.
Ducray looking to pick off J.D. Williams at first. Sucre looking to go after the batter here with this play. Come on, Hamster. Fast ball. J.D. Williams will take advantage of that. He will get to second standing up. Yeah, yeah. Two and one to count. Tomorrow, huh? For the Royals. David Meta up on the batter's deck here. The Royals. Takes that for a little rip to right field. Will get down just before the right fielder. JT Williams rounding third. However, decides to stay at third. Runners now on the corner to the Royals. First base on number 40, David Mendo. David Mendo. Come on, Quas. Get, get the points early. Feels <laughs> he has to pull into the wall, man. We appreciate the enthusiasm from every fan in the game. Runners on the corners with no outs. Top of the first, Sucre delivers the first pitch of the at bat. He's met him, and that's called a strike. Only one the count. It's that one. I think it went directly over the broadcast booth. It is 0 2. Sucre looking to get the strikeout and get it done with his pitch. My job. So hopefully, uh, to, to get the first out of the inning for the Sox. Runners on the corners. Goes after that one. Sucre getting the first strikeout of the game. One away. Third baseman, number 35, Malik Collymore. Missed a great fastball right there, high and away on the hitter. He's not catching up to that. Malik Collymore. Bouncing into the box of the Royals with runners in the corner, one away. Great chance for a double play here on Granther. Mm -hmm. Got one high for a fault. It's 1-0. <laughs> yes, Andrew, you are correct. This would be a great opportunity for Bramford to hopefully line up on the double play. That is a high fly ball to center, center fielder. Center tag. He gets that. Second out. J.D. Williams will score a run standing up as the throw from the center fielder just short. Forcing the back catcher to be. Halfway to the pitcher's mouth. Catch that one. Designated hitter number 24, Justin Interesano. Justin Interesano. Let's go, Fox Reels. Justin, a big unit, big frame man, looking like Poppy out there. With a guy. His statue, you, you might be looking at. Let's go yard. So uh, let's try to get a whole bunch here. Sucre takes that one for a strike. Only one, one to count. Two away. One nothing Royals. And that's not a strike. Only one two to count. Takes that one, rips it down to second base. Second baseman fields it cleanly over to Nick Bernard for the fourth out at first. Deep in the Guelph Royals, the only score one run, run that top hits. of the first. No one nothing one well. Well. On base. Going into the bottom of the first. This is Blanford Red Sox baseball. 
We'll be right back. The bottom of the first inning. Let's go, Red Sox. As he has sent, he's on a lemon first. It's one nothing well, Patrick. He's he's scoring from a pass ball. The pass ball. You can enjoy restaurant quality meals right in the comfort of your own home. And then it meets on King George Road, something that sounds like every great day. Eating off the bottom of the first inning for the Ramp Red Sox, number 24, Matt Fabio. Matthew Fabian in his last year game for his last 16. So we've got here him to be on base early and often in this one. That is excellent here. Finally, getting the sticks going for the Sox. Perfect guy to get it sticked right here. Matt Fabian taking the first pitch here. Going out to that one. Call it straight. Going upon the count. Okay. He was trying to check that swing. However, the ball is still in the contact of barrel. It's 0 and 2. Matt's looking to protect here at the plate. Wolf seeing their first strikeouts. Got their last pitch was a fastball, wanted it again, didn't get it, got the slider, swung right through it. Gus Wilson now takes into the box for Rampant Red Sox. One away. Those are another guy who's been off. First four hitters for Brantford in the last three games have just been incredible. Gus Wilson looking at that one. It's 0 1 the count. If the Brantford Red Sox continue to improve at this rate, you know, next season for the Sox is also going to be very much exciting. Gus Wilson taking a, a second look at that one, leaving that one away, down and away for. A ball, one and one to count against Wilson. That one's high. Two and one to count. Two one with just seen early, Nick, so far. This ball pitch on the throws hard. He throws incredibly hard. He is relentless. Down um, there, hits an elevator shaft shot. <laughs> No one's able to locate the ball, but it lands sh just short of the Guelph dugout. And a great little nab there by the uh, Guelph manager on that one. Mm -hmm. I think he even seen it coming down. Yeah, great pretty good here, doing two. Gus Wilson looking to get on the base is for the Sox. That one's another high pitch, full count. Now he hit my favorite time of any at bat, the payoff.
Payoff pitcher. Again, set, and he takes that one, and it's going to be foul over the first base fence line. Going to go right over the stands there and over onto the junior field. Okay, I was listening for a crunch or, <laughs> or glass breaking. On a car? Well, the likelihood of one being hit today is pretty high with that's all some, diamonds being utilized. I've never seen all diamonds being utilized. Got some huge power hitters, too. So if you got parked back there, home run territory. Watch out. That's close. Oh, geez, that one. That's such a good uh, advantage to having such a small frame like Gus Wilson. Shake out strikes on incredibly hard to be a pitcher to throw your strike. Oh, yeah. Trim Bowles now taking to the box for the Red Sox. Gus Wilson getting walked to first. Again, Kieran Bowles on base machine in his last three games. Hitting just about 675 over his last three. 675? Yes, sir. Josh, new 700 player. Boom. Takes that one. Foul. Goes off a couple masks there, making sure the umpire's okay. Talking about a double whammy, two birds, one stone kind of deal. Garen kind of giving a little laugh to the umpire, but glad to see the back catcher and the umpire are both okay after that. Both are pretty tough cookies out here. Just in time for Sienna. Again, to those of you just joining and wondering why I made that call. Nice rep over the third baseman. Darren Bowles will be rounding, going to second. Gus Wilson turning on the Jets for the third base coach, holding him up at third. Hunters now on second and third. On a great double by Kieran Bowles. As that ball rockets over the third baseman for the Gulf Royals. The designated hitter, Robert Flero, Jeremy. Best part about it, one away and no double play opportunity here. That's the big one. The big one. No guy on first, three base wide open. That's that's very true. Jeremy Bayou now taking to the box with the Brantford Red Sox with runners on second and third. Going after that first one, it's a called strike. Oh, and won the count. Gus Wilson on third. Karen Bowles on second. One away. One nothing Royals. Bottom of the first. Leaves that one in the dirt. One and one. Big man Nick Burdett now on the batter stack for the red size. That one is low and inside. Another called ball. Two and one the count. Runners on second and third. He's at 2 1. That's he popped off. He will go into the stance here. Whoa! Ooh. It is so important when you're at a sporting event that you're keeping your eyes on yeah. the play as much as possible. And the kids end up with the ball. Hopefully they know the return that to the concession stand. I don't know if they know. But... Oh, they know the return that to the concession stand. Well, I guess there was a game uh, a little while ago where uh, one of the fans got the ball signed and didn't go. Full count now. Best part to be at that right here. Here we go. With runners on second and third, this could be a very interesting bat. Here it is. He checks his swing, and it will be loading the bases as Bayou gets walked to first. Runners on first, second, and third. With Nick Burdett coming up to the plate. Damn. For that now, taking to the box, Brantford Red Sox, a fully loaded diamond for the Sox. Going after that first pitch, fouls it back to the backstop. He wanted that one, folks. He wanted that, and he didn't just want to hit a single with that. 
He wanted that one. Nick Burdak, 0 and 1. He leaves that one high for a ball. 1 1 the count. Base is fully loaded for the Brantford Red Sox. Bottom of the first. Nick Burdak takes that one for a little bit of a fluke. Shortstop looking to catch that one to get two away. Base is still remain fully loaded. Christian Kazemka now going to the Red Sox. Kazemka. Umpire moved that one in neutral fly for Nick Burdett. Right. Christian now with some runners to work with. Hopefully we can do something with this. Goes after that first one. A nice little poke to right. And it's dropped. One's going to come in. And Kazanka's going to be in there at second. And we got a tie game, folks. Yeah, so if Karen came in, that, that's shooting too. <laughs> Picture number 31, Justin. With Gus Wilson and Karen Bowles scoring, it is now 2 1 for the Brantford Red Sox at the top, or sorry, the bottom of the first. Runners on second and third. First pitch of the at back called ball. Comes to pitch. Going after that one over the backstop fence. And the 1-1. One, one. That one's in there called strike. One and two. Looking to try to utilize the other two runners now that are on the bases for the Red Sox. It's two to one for the Brantford Red Sox. He's going after that one, but again fouls it over the backstop in the same position as it was the first uh, the first one. I was gonna say big saying, staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> Add it in to keep at the at bats. Absolutely. Goes after that one swinging. And that's going to be strike three right there. Leaving runners on second and third. But that's okay. We at least got two in that one. No errors. One off that's left on base. Hey, fans, don't forget that the foul balls are on property in the Red Sox. Let's return those to the concession stand for a treat. While you're down at the concession stand, don't forget we've got a special on tonight. Bacon hot dog, drizzle with Thai sauce. Only seven for a second. Take some treat you don't want to miss. Get set to the top of the second. Leading off for the Gulf Royals, number 28, Ethan Hammond. Yeah. 
it was quite the nice bottom of the first inning when Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Bayou, or no, sorry, Kieran Bowles and Gus Wilson scored to make the game two to one for the Red Sox. Now the second for the Royals, the right fielder number twenty-eight, Ethan Hammond. Ethan Hammond, a Toronto-born ball player. You played for the. Duville Spartans for college baseball. Now here with the Royals in the IBL. Sucre. Well, first pitch of the inning called ball. Want to know the count. Yeah. Oh, and Bunt is shown right there. That one's going to be foul. Yeah. One and one the count. Brandon Keys will be batting next for the Guelph Royals, number 23. One on one, the count against Ethan Hamilton. Goes after that one. One and two, the count. Sue Craig really looks like he's bouncing from last inning. Yeah, he's feeling good. He's got a little hop to his side. Deliveries, and he gets him. Gets him looking. Hammond striking out. Catcher number started off Brandon getting Brandon Keys. Brandon Keys looking to get on base for the Royals. Nothing to eat Hammond. Goes down looking. It is the top of the second. One away. 2 1 Brantford. First pitch against Keys was high for a ball. Puts that one in there for a strike. It's one and one. A beautiful curve. But that was super great. And not only that, but it, it didn't look like it had too much ump behind it either. It kind of just floated in. No, exactly. And you could even see from back, from back here, you could see that. Did he just in did that, that again? Edge. He just did it again. It is now one and two. Kind of love to dip in that curve. Paul it is gonna be effective all night. I mean, that's his uh secret weapon, and maybe he's gonna put the fastball to him now, which he does. Does oh. we'll get him on first. It's funny the psychology of pitching and how it's to be done. The fielder number 19, we Chris said Robinson. Sucre bounced back. There's two straight strikeouts for him right there. Sucre looking very good. Yeah. Chris Robinson now. And that first pitch, again, that curveball that we just talked about, that was in there for called strike. Some people not agreeing with that call. That one inside for a ball. One and one the count. Nice rip down past the third baseman. Getting to left field. Left fielder now throwing that back into the infield. Chris Robinson getting the first. Second baseman, number 98. His hometown, New Market, Ontario. His last team was the Welland Jackfish and pro exper uh, experience with the Winnipeg Gold Eyes and the American Association Association and Moorhead State University NCAA for college experience. Cal Cush now up to the plate for the Royals. He takes that one, rips it to the first base fence line. Foul. A Guelph native. Played for the Kenesis Golden Griffins for his college experience. Oh, Kush leaves that one. Now, I want you to look at this guy over here on first base. And just take a look at what he does here, folks. Look at that lead he's got. Yeah, that's got to be a side save. 12 for 13 foot leadoff. 
He's not going to want to go now. Counts one and two. That one's outside ball. Runner on first for Guelph. It's two to one, Brandon. Top of the second. Goes after that one. We get down, down to the to second. I may now have out there. That's going to be the end of the inning. No worries in the second. No runs, one hit, no errors. One man left on base. Red Sox, second baseman, number five, Taichi Nakamura. Now, Nick, we talked about Kareem earlier before this game had started here. This is a guy right here, the number five, Taichi Nakamura, standing in here at five foot five. It finds just a different strike zone for that pitcher. And he's even the pro player legend. Makes him almost five foot three. With him crouching. And that is from the source himself. I like his tactic though. Yeah. As he was uh, eager to go after that first one, only one count. Tachi. Man, for for a little frame, like he's he's got the power behind his swing. Yeah, he he makes a lot of good contact, rarely strikes out. I like to think of this guy as the V Tech Ichiro Suzuki. Like, this is a guy who can just spray say, the ball across the field. I was going to say, reminds me of that too. Uh, up the middle here, shortstop now for the Royals, fielding that one over to first. Tachi will be out. One away. Again, just to keep an eye on for that game, you just take a look at him. Number 20, Chesley. It's a different strike zone. He basically increased that strike zone by about a third every single time he comes up to the bat. It's going to be interesting to see what these pitchers are going to be able to do when he comes up to the plate here. He does draw a lot of walks. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. Well, that's good. Any way to get on base. Now, Jesse Fishbaum. Looking to make a difference here on the mount, or the butter box. Leaves that one high for ball one. Speaking of another guy you can draw walks. Oh. He goes after that one, but he kind of wishes he didn't. 
one, one count. Fabian will be mad at himself for that one, but hopefully he doesn't let him distract him and sit back. What? Fish bomb. One and one. At least that inside. Two and one the cow. High pitch, three one the cow. Darren now trying to get back into it, and he does full count. Darren shred on the mound for the Royals still. We've already had three full counts. This is the best game we've had yet. <laughs> Very much true. You gotta love the full counts, folks. It's the payoffs on its way. And he goes down looking. Great fielder, number 24, Matthew. You know there that Jesse was not expecting that fastball to come in. He wanted that off speed. He was looking for it, just didn't get it there. Well, and not only that, but that fastball was quite low. And you just think he was getting away with that, but the ups calling that strike tonight. Fabian taking the first one. Now you've seen it, now he goes. He was kind of signaling back to the young. There was quite the dance movement on it as it was coming into the plate, causing him to have second guesses. Two swing you got. Second pitch by Dick Darren is outside for a ball one one. Cast booth, it is one and two count. Right. Didn't even skim anything up here, it just came straight over. It's got to be what foul ball number 12. Ball. And we'll see plenty of more of them tonight, folks. Lit up the metal, well, shortstop making it look to. First. That's a nice play wow, there by the shortstop. Great play. great play by the shortstop and even better pick by first baseman there. That's going to be the third out. The key to that play was shortstop had so much momentum chasing that ball down that making it over to first was, was easy for him. He had that momentum. He had that push. He, he was excelling towards first while he was making that play. And Matthew Fabian, as we all know, he's got speed. He's got some pretty good speed there. It takes a lot to beat him out. What a great play there. So the second inning comes to a close. It's still 2-1 Blantford going into the top of the third. This is Red Sox baseball with Nick and Andrew. And we'll be right back.
And we're back. Top of the third inning. Leading off for the Guelph Royals. Number nine, J.D. Williams. And again, the iconic Christmas sleeve. Very iconic for tonight's game. As it's Christmas in the park. Or sorry, Christmas in July in the park. Here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of a bunt there from Mr. J.D. Williams. A little something to keep an eye on if you're corner infield. Leaves that one down and low. 2-0. Making Sucre work for the strikes here. And that's... It looked like it was high inside, but the ump's calling that a strike. 2-1. and one. And The ump here just uh, giving a little talk over to that golf bench there. Won't be the first time and the last time that Guelph and Brantford had played each other. Just that one for a rip to shortstop. Shortstop now fielding that over to Burnett. Getting the force out of first. One away. Sorry, you were saying, Andrew, before that play. Shortstop number I'll two. I'll try to let the shortstop Norman. make the play first. But well, I was saying, a guy on Guelph, the last time that Brantford and Guelph had played each other, a guy on Guelph did get tossed for arguing balls and strikes. So just a little something to keep an eye out as this game goes along. Yes, it's very early on. It's still, uh, we still got six, well, five and a half innings now in play. Connor Morrow, hometown, Caledon, Ontario, 25 year old. And that first pitch is in there, called strike. With one away, 2 1 Brant for top and third. Leaves that one. Low and inside, one won the count. Takes that one for a little pop up to left field. Left fielder now getting himself underneath it as he makes the catch for the second out against the Gulf Royals. First baseman number 40, David Mendo. David Mendo. Now taking some box for the Royals. David Mendo, he's one of those five tool guys out there. He can hit for power, he can spray the ball into the field, and he's got that speed. Oh, yeah. It's not electric, electric speed, but oh, if you ask him to steal a base, he'll steal a base for you. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. There's a reason Wolf haven't been third here. Leaves that outside. Two and oh the count. Sucre looking to shake. Shake that one. Sucre with pitch. Three and the count. I believe that's the first walk against Sucre. Too. Yep. Yes, that is the first walk against Sucre. Number 35. Thankfully, Marie. comes with two outs. Thankfully, came here with two outs. Get this next guy out all of a sudden. You're done three innings. Malik Collymore. With runner on first. Two away. 2-1 two, Brantford. Malik with pro experience with the St. Louis Cardinals in the MILB. Sucre looking to go to first. So again, Malik with St. Louis Cardinals MILB from 2013-14. Milwaukee Brewers in 15 and 16. So Cincinnati Reds 2017-18. And then he went to the Ontario, or sorry, not to the Ontario, the Ottawa Champions in the Can-Am League in 2019. 
has been with Golf Royals ever since. And he's built himself 3 0 count here. The umpire not really giving much of a help to uh, Sucre as that last one was uh, kind of painting the line, it looks. But he's not falling for the frame jobs tonight, this umpire. No, he's not. And that one is called strike three and one. That's Malik's looking to probably get this. Either it's going to be a walk or I can see this being a, a ground ball. You almost called it, almost but it's did. just fouls on that third base side. And again, it's the, uh, the infamous full count. The payoff. The best part of any of that. Unless he starts fouling it off in the next 20 pitches, then we're in for a long night. Okay. Let's just see what happens here, Sir Nick. Sucre, looking to get out. Oh, and it looked like it was borderline, but Malik getting walked at first. Runners on first and second now for the Royals. Two elected hitter number 24, Justin and Terrasano. This is where everybody's saying, any bag, boys, any bag. And the uh, home plate umpire, folks, has now just talked to the Brantford Red Sox dugout here. Both dugouts have had a little talking to by the home plate umpire here. Justin and Terrasano. And that was just after that last pitch was called a ball for ball four. Same situation where both teams get a... Uh, or no. a little bit of a well, nice that walk. Walk. We get a nice rock, and all of a sudden, the other team's going, hey, wait a minute, you called this. Uh, it's always umpire's call at the end of the day, and we've seen people get tossed. Mm -hmm. These two teams played each other before. We've seen guys get tossed before. It'll happen again. Okay. 0 one so the base runner giving a little bit of the mental game, trying to make some noise. Sucre looks like he's focusing in on even after the batter here. That's that one. One and two to count. Looking to protect to keep the inning going for the Royals. Justin from North York. Something base runner doing some dancing there. Gets freezes him up a little bit, but that's golf ball. Almost looked like the last pitch there, but again, umpire calls that ball too. Almost has us disagreeing up here now. Two and two the count. That one's way outside. That one got away on him. The payoff. <laughs> Yet again, another full count at that here. Sucre wiping down the brow. As he settles in here, I would think he's still thinking about just going after the batter. He's oh, got two strikes against him right now. He just has to settle in there and do what he does. He rips that one just foul of the first baseline. Runners will have to go back to first and second. Third base coach there just talking to that runner who is going to be on second. They might be looking to maybe do a little hit and run here. Runners will be going on this pitch. And folks are talking about the legal hit and run. Not the only one's type. The payoff. Go runners. It's a boat fly ball 
that will just be shy of Elsa. Third baseman dropping that one and will flare wide over the first baseman. Two runs will score. It is now three to two for the Royals. Off of a bad play and a bad throw over first base. Yeah, right after that ball was dropped there, I didn't really understand the play to first because the runner was always going to be safe at first. Me, what I, what I would have done, if it was me out there, I would have just thrown back to third, let play be dead. There's only one run on the board at that point. Oh. Yeah, you got more guys on base, but I mean, yeah. as long as the one run comes in, Sucre, you got to have trust in your pitcher there, which, of course, Frank and Red Sox do. Yeah, and uh, you, you can see the the sheer panic when he uh, dropped that fly ball. I will give the guy credit, though. Is a junior out there. The only junior in the lineup today, so we'll give him a pass. Yeah, we'll give him a pass. If, uh, if anyone, I, I think that you and I know what it's like to be hard on yourself when it comes to doing anything that you're really passionate about. It, Absolutely. It's a huge mental thing, right? So right now, he's got to think, oh, geez, man, I just dropped that. Not only that, nice little rip over third baseman going into left field. Left fielder having a little bit of two, and that one up. Now it's 4-2 for the golf Royals. Pitcher number 23, Brennan Keys. Brennan Keys up for the Royals now. Yeah. And it, it's such a mental thing. You know, you could be going towards being an artist, singer, songwriter, or, you know, semi professional ball player, but everything's mental game. Wow. Nice little crack in second, second baseman now, feeling that nice and clean over first to get the Brent for Red Sox or the JM. 4 2 12 going into the third. Third. One, one hit, one for an error, one man left on base. And it's funny. I think right, each third out today or two left here has been to second base. Yes. And only one. So still, that's second baseman in the game. This is Red Sox baseball. We'll be right back. The bottom of the third inning. Already Red Sox fans. Here in the bottom of the off. Just the 79. Gus Nielsen. I see boy. Aaron Bowles and Jeremy Bayou will follow in this bottom of the third end. Switching out baseballs here. The pitcher's not really uh, what he had. Okay. Yeah. 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 
I know. It, it, he just exchanged the baseball. It's nothing to me. Okay. Let's put that one in there for the strike, the first pitch against Josh Wilson. Oh, we want the count. 4 2 well, bottom of the field. Here at Arnold Anderson Stadium, where it is Christmas in July. Takes that for him. Fouls a bag. I mean, Gus Wilson finds himself quickly behind here on two. Gus Wilson staying alive here at this at bat. Not an easy thing to do against this ball pitcher, too, let me tell you. Yeah, he seems to be very consistent when he wants to throw whatever it is that he wants to throw. He's going to throw it. He's going to throw it well. Like this right here, which is questionable. But call it ball. One and two to count against Gus Wilson. A little bit questionable. Again, we we mentioned in the last inning that frame job that the catcher's doing. The umpire's noticing it right away, and he's calling it right when it hits the glove. Pokes at that one. That goes to the backstop. It's a great hack there by Fabian, just, or sorry, not by Fabian, by Gus Wilson, just to stay alive there. That was a great pitch. <laughs> Gus Wilson, one and two. Try to continue the at bat. Rips that one over the shortstop, and it lands shy of left field. Gus Wilson will get to first. And he extends his hitting streak to six games, folks. Karen Bowles. Now, look at make something happen with Gus Wilson being on first for the Brantford Red Sox. Gus Wilson with that nice beauty hack to get to first. Karen Bowles looking to do something here. Karen looks at that one. It's called strike. Owen won the count. Nice. Up the middle to center field. Center fielder will catch that one. Gus Wilson going back to first. One away, but a beautiful. Little shot straight center field. Great contact. Just center fielder is in the right spot. Who is standing here? Number 12. Jeremy Bayer. Well, as we all know, Gus Wilson can run. You got to watch out for him on the base paths, too. His Brantford team, a lot of guys who can run. And they got secret speed out there. First pitch there is just a little bit low. Ball one. Ball one against Bayou. <laughs> Gus Wilson looking to get it start off the second. Yeah. And he does. Gus Wilson going to third. Bayou. Having everyone fooled by stealing second. No one was there to stop the ball rolling by. Where the second baseman should be for the ball broils. Runners now on the corners. The Brantford Red Sox has Nick Burdett gets ready and set. This is a guy who started off the season a little bit slow, but he's been picking things up recently. So, I mean, with one away here, runners on the corners. If I'm Nick Burdett, I'm looking to drive something deep. Let's go for a ride. Let's go for a ride indeed. Nick Burnett. Oh, he's looking like he wants it. Leaves it. Look down. But that's called a strike with one away. Runners on first and third. Nick Burnett. 0 1. Takes that for a rip. Gets 
Oh, shortstop able to get there and get the out at second, but Nick Burnett is safe at first. Gus Wilson scoring, making it 4 3 Royals. The fielder number 41, that's me, who's so down. Chris Christian, his MCA number guy, has just been heating up so far lately for his Brantford team. Again, he'll be looking to drive something in here and deep into that outfield. That first pitch of the at bat, called strike. Not a super threat on the bases here for Brantford, but something deep into that outfield. And Nick Burdett, he'll get the burners on. I think it was uh, Christian calling times on that one. Looking to slow it down a little bit, get to his pace. Yeah. Nick Burnett on first. What an incredible play made by the shortstop to keep that ball. And again, another rip, and it gets by. Runners on first and second now for the Red Sox. Man, Nick, these Brantford Nickels who keep describing them from what they want to say here. Well, exactly, like I was so saying, they were certain one of Just the three. Just mine now, like the Red Sox. What I wanted to say was that last play made by shortstop got into the infield, and the quick turnaround, so we get the force out on second, that last play was very well done. Uh, so kudos to the shortstop for both. Runners on first and second. Murray letting that one go as that's outside for a ball. Want to know the count? It's four to three Royals. This could be very interesting. He's able to poke that one out there to the outfield, put it into one of the holes. Another pitch away from the plate. Two and oh, the count. Wow. Two away now. Runners will be running. And it's the first strike of the at-bat. Murray now giving the green light to go. Swings at that one. It's two and two now. Even count here at two and two. That one is inside, nearly grazing the kneecaps of Marie. This next pitch here, Nick, is going to be a big one. He's got very... Taichi Nakamura on deck. We talked about it earlier. Five foot five frame. Going to be an issue for this guy up here. Full count here. Would love to see the bases loaded. Oh, that'd be amazing. Pokes that one just. First, wow. I get there in time. Very close there. It's the first baseman almost made the play. Oh, there's some advancement here. Now it's a full, full base situation. Well, what just happened? What just happened there? Nothing. I don't know, but umpire given the AOK -okay for Murray to get to first base. So the misses are by Trichy Nakamura. Trichy Nakamura. Looking to make a difference here with the game being only a one-run difference for three Royals. And we'll get full confirmation after this inning on why he was placed on first there. But when we get that, we will give you that information. Catcher interference, Sean, the PA announcer. High oh. and inside. Catcher was not happy about that catcher's interference call. You know, it was interesting. I didn't really notice a whole lot. Could have been when Murray was swinging. Yeah. Like just as he was swinging, he probably just ran into his bat. Or what What catchers typically do is when, you know, it's that one strike that you end the inning, right? They like to lunge forward a little bit. Maybe he got into the 
into the plane it's too much. One one count against Taichi. Again, on pretty much any other hitter there. That's a ball. Again, like you said, five foot five, but when Crouch becomes five foot three, takes that for a little rip, but will be foul. Best part about him, too, just makes great contact with the ball, and he can take pitches when he wants to, too. He's one of almost he's one of Brantford's most underrated hitters, not just for his size, but the fact that he can put the ball anywhere in the field and he's got that speed. Oh yeah, he he's out there with purpose. Nice little rip, but I think that's getting caught by shortstop. Four, three, Guelph going into the bottom. Or sorry, top of the fourth. Two Red Sox in the third, one run, two hits. This one is error. the Brantford Red Sox. That's on base. We'll be right back. At the top of the fourth inning, four three Royals here at Arnold Anderson Stadium, Christmas in July. Mm -hmm. And I just saw the nicest comment here that I have seen us get so far. Lynn, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You don't know what that means to me and Nick to hear that. Seriously. Thank you. And we will keep doing what we're doing. Thank you very much. I'll be sure to show him. He's not up here right now, but I will be sure to show him 100%. Thank you very much. <laughs> And now, speaking off of that, we head into this top the fourth inning. Not as Curtis Robinson shows a bunt. Then they throw him out of there. That's going to be out number one. Didn't even have time to get to the scoreboard there. And Kyle Cush comes up to the bit plate here with one away. And again, Kyle Cush, folks, he's already gone on base once tonight. And that first pitch, folks, was outside. Ball one. That next one's going to be popped up here into shallow ground. Shortstop ranges for it, and he's going to make the play. That's two away. Center fielder number nine, J.D. Williams. Great piece of defense so far by Brantford for those two outs.
And we come up to the top of the lineup here, a.k.a. J.D. Williams. And we're going to call him just for tonight. We're going to call him Christmas Sleeve just for tonight. That first pitch is away, ball one. That one's going to get a little inside on the hitter there, 2-0. and That one's going to be down and away there, 3-0 and now. Now, again, you guys know my mark on a 3-0 count. Do not swing if you are the hitter. Make the pitcher work for it. And that one's going to be called ball four right there. J.D. Williams takes first. Two away here. What's up, number two, Connor Morrow? And shortstop Connor Morrow comes up to the plate here for Guelph with two away. One run ball game here, four to three in favor of the Guelph Royals against the Brantford Red Sox. And that one's going to be grounded up the right side and through into the outfield for a base hit. And runners here on first and second for Guelph here, two away. And David Mednum's up to the plate now for Guelph two away. I have got dinner here. Two gloves at it. So let me know what I missed. And that one's gonna be called a ball, folks. One and oh. Fans aren't happy about that one. Big swing and a miss right there. One and one. Wanted fastball. Got off speed instead. Yeah. One one there is fouled back behind us. One and two. Sucre set. That one's going to be outside again. Even count here, two and two. Again, not buying the framework to me, eh? No, these umps, uh, they don't want to call that framework. They don't want to call it frame jobs tonight. And both teams don't seem to like it so far. Even count here. Sucre set. A little bit high there, and we head into my favorite part of any at bat, the 3-2 count. Where hitters become monsters and pitchers become beasts. And Sucre with the payoff. Because that one's going to be driven out towards right, but that's going to be foul. He straightens that one out, man. That's going to be the longest home run of the season, I would think. Oh, at least at Arnold Anderson, easily, yes. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. 
Sucre said. He gets the nod of approval. Here it is. That was Sucre. Play. You get a clap for me, Jeremiah Sucre. What a play by the pitcher. Yeah, Sucre. For the Wills of the Fourth, no runs, one hit, no errors. Two men left on base. What good is it for me? And with that great play by Sucre, that was the third out. We'll be right back, folks, with the bottom of the fourth inning here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. And with Christmas in July. And we're back, Red Sox fans, to the bottom of the fourth inning. Jesse Fishbaum leading things off for the Red Sox. Pass ball there, one and one. Sorry, folks, we uh, we haven't really been uh, keeping the time. Oh, shoot. Got to get to the scoreboard here, folks. Hold on a second. We have one ball. Yeah. Nice little poke, but all done first base line. Line. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's right. Two and two account. Fish bomb. Looking to make some noise. Hits a little dainty shot to second base. Second baseman fielding that one cleanly to first to get the first out against the Sox. What did you get things one from the Red Sox? As it's four, three, Boils. And uh, Lynn Robinson, if you're still watching, uh, folks, just want to let you know that I've watched a ton of baseball over the years. You are the two most respectful commentators. Keep doing what you do. Thank you, Lynn, if that was directed towards us. We always try our best to deliver a good live stream for the fans at home to win. One and one account. <laughs> nice rip getting by the second baseman Matt Fagan will get the first 
Shortstop number 49. God, that's Wilson. That's Wilson. Gus Wilson now with Matt Fabian on first. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay. Dust Wilson. Takes that one. There's a strike. Looking a little low, but. To be about shin level, however, I guess the refs, or not the refs, it's the game hockey. The um. The um. <laughs> It's all right, guys. The burger put Nick to sleep. Yeah, I did. <laughs> delicious burgers, delicious food here at the Arnold Anderson Stadium. Oh, it into the cow. Goss looking to protect with one away. Matt Fabian on first for the Red Sox. Takes that one for a big swing. Two outs. Mm -hmm. Still on first. Catcher number 11, Kieran Poles. Kieran Poles. Up now for the Red Sox. Two away. Matt Fabian still on first for the Red Sox. I would do, let's look around the league right now, but uh, the other game that was supposed to happen was in London, and it was that rained out. Postponed. And now we have a rundown to end the inning. And you don't see rundowns very often. No. In the IBM. The Red Sox and the fourth move on to it here in the mirror. It's no one left in the race. As we get set for the top inning, it's 4-3 Royals. Still very much a close game with still five, five more innings. Jeez, that burger really did put me to sleep. Burger really did. It's been a hard time. 11 hours and then making the trip down. Right from here. But I'm always excited to be a part of such an awesome experience here at Arnold Anderson Stadium, where not too long ago in Murphy, a show here. You gotta believe a story based off a real, real event. The 2002 Green Texas team who eventually won the uh, Little League World Series in the United States. It didn't also just happen here. I, I know that for a fact that the Bat Memorial Park in London also took part in uh, in the filming of that movie as well. And one of the leading reasons why our scoreboard out in right field has brand new light bulbs. So, so it took a little bit more than a year, and we uh, felt here to get new light bulbs. But we got them. But we got them, and it looks nice. It looks beautiful. And not only that, but like uh, it's so bright that you can't really see or make out the score on the live stream. But it's always nice when you get new things, especially the uh, eye. It's nice to see that and see the investment into the ballpark. It doesn't surprise me too that for this movie, they picked two of the more iconic stadiums in reality. And it's not in all of Ontario. Yes, I agree. With Labatt Memorial Park being established in 1866, currently the world's oldest active ball grounds. And was honored by the MLB uh, history, uh, the historics in the ML, uh, MLB. And there was an official post put out about it back in June on the MLB uh, social media platforms. As we get set for the top of the fifth, 
Trespass music has been played throughout the entirety of the game. But it is Christmas in July, and here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. Showing the bunt early. Early and often. However, checking his swing is that's a ball. That one's in there for a called strike. One yeah. and one to count. Nice little off speed there. I like that. I like how you see that just slow up right in the last, I'd say, 20 feet to home plate. You see it taper off real quick. Well, it'll change up again, but that one going down in the dirt. Two one down now. I like Collyborn. Was looking to take one that's a sorry. I was, I was looking to take that one about five hundred feet is what I think you were trying to say. Yeah. Jeez, I cannot speak. No more burgers while in the broadcast booth. <laughs> New rule, no burgers in the broadcast booth. Just for me, though. I lost my privileges. I'm just and a nice rip getting by third baseman. As we see Malik. Gets the first. Hitter number 24, Justin Interessano. Justin Interessano now with Malik on first for the Royals. Still 4-3. It's still a pretty tight game. And I really feel like the playing styles between those two teams are pretty evenly matched. It's just that oh, one has sure. one more run than the other. Yeah. Like, the only reason, too, why they have that one extra run is just because of an errant throw. Like, you take away the errant throw, it's a tie game. I agree 100%. And again, going back to the unfortunate trend, right, where... Even if it's one run or six runs in an inning, it's it's all about the errors. Always, always about the errors. Always about going one, two, three, making sure you don't give him extra at bats. Now we will give credit because he has been called up from the juniors. Like obviously, when you get to that, and that's a called strike there. Yeah. Oh, and one being called up to the senior uh, men's league here from the junior standpoint i i i even remember being called up from bantam to junior and that was enough for me to be yeah. nervous right you always want to make that good impression uh however you know like you you are here you they they called you up for a reason right so water underneath the bridge hopefully it was a lesson absolutely and even in the last game too we had junior e from paulos and he was batting ninth in the lineup Ooh, big swing and on that one he might have got Wow. He's going to be safe in there at second, stolen base. Malik getting in there, stealing second. Kind of caught the Red Sox sleeping for a split second there, then made the, the choice of, hey, let's commit, and let's go to second. Yeah. A throw made by the back catch from second base. If that, you know, if that was a second sooner, even though Malik had such a great start on that uh, stolen base of second, there could have been an opportunity to get him out. Very much so. and. And you almost see, you see Aaron Bowles almost kind of delayed, too. Like, he's like, wait, is the runner going? He, he, he almost didn't think the runner was going on. Because we we often see it because there is no out. So, yeah, like, for a base runner on first to, to waste your energy to try to get second. Now, for for the standpoint of offense, yes, do it. Because, you know, the, the further, oh, oh, Sucre now deciding to go towards second to keep Malik on second. But with no L, like, and no balk called on that one. Yes, and that was a very clean transition by Sucre. We've seen a couple of times in these last few games where there's another and, uh, clean transition, as we were just talking about. Yes. And the umps in this league are very uh, particular when it comes to box, and it's very easily caught by these umpires. And, you know, like, yeah, there's the odd um for the odd call where we don't agree. But there's quite an even balance throughout the league, I think, when it comes to the umpiring. And whether or not, yeah, okay, it is bad calls. Well, guess what? The other team's getting bad calls just as much as this 
yeah. as your team, right? So it's very interesting to see that, especially as we go through the rotation, because we don't always get the same umps, right? Well, for some sure. umps like the high strikes or the low strikes or the everywhere strikes, but that goes both ways for both teams. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, this ump tonight, he's been he's been pretty consistent on both sides for sure. And Sucre looking. Oh, and there's. No, I just think that the batter was calling for a times as uh, Sucre was making that transition to try to keep Malik on second. Malik not taking a very aggressive lead off as he knows that Sucre means business. Ever since that stolen base too, we see that uh, Sucre is a little concerned about that runner on second. Points. But no concern, Mr. Sucre. You can punch guys out like that one away. Our fielder number 28, Ethan Hammond. Justin was not impressed as he aggressively turned and grabbed his almost choke. Oh, you're hearing some knocking there. Not impressed at all with that strikeout. Nope, and you see him just right there, 224. He's bouncing right back. He's taking a look. He wants revenge in the next at bat for sure. Nothing. Uh, not not a worse feeling in the world when you think, okay, I feel this happen. I feel it. And then you go down swinging. Ethan first, Hammond. That first one there, he gets that fun fact in time. It's going to be ball one. That was quite impressive, like, uh, to, to, to be in such a position for the bunt. It requires a lot of pullback, especially when the pitch is coming in at oh, the mid 90s, right? Oh. I commend the bunt hitters because it's not easy to get that guy down, keep it there, and not only that, keep it out of the air too. And you not miss one part of the bat with the bunt, and all of a sudden it's popped up back towards us. It's hit foul. You only can't do it on two strikes. It or how about the scary arc? fact of uh, a fastball coming towards you, and you're 18 inches away from where it's going to hit on it's, the barrel? Exactly. Less than two feet at most times. So, can we move in here? We got a 3 0 count. This game is, uh, is sped up a little bit as we're at the top of the fifth now. It's uh, 9 40. Oops. Sorry, 9 50. And there's that strike. Batter doesn't swing on 3 0 as expected. In the middle of the sixth inning, we'll do a quick little MLB update with scores going around the pro leagues. Every team's in action today, fun fact. Very busy night for the MLB and for all teams. Branford visibly upset on that call. Branford faithful did not like that one. Not one bit. But it's been one of those pitches, though. I will give the umpire credit here, as we should, always should. Oh, we got a little pitcher's mound meeting here with catcher and manager. Chris Robinson will be up next for the Guelph Royals. As there's men on first and second with one away. Four, three, Royals, top of fifth. Yep. And the umpire there, too. He just took a proper little look into that Red Sox dugout. He was talking over to... One guy over in that dugout just telling him to knock it off. I think he's on his final straw at this point. Yeah. Catcher number 23, Brendan Keyes. Brendan Keyes now up for the uh, Royals. Sorry, I said Chris Robinson before, but it's Brendan Keyes up now for the Guelph Royals. A little bit of a mound visit, but leaving Sucre into the game, which I, I, in all honesty, it's just he just needs to have that conversation with Sucre again back in the into the groove. He's been doing pretty good uh, in tonight's game. Like like we said, it it was all about uh, the unfortunate error and you know uh, some other things, but and a nice little bunt leg, but that's foul on the first baseline. Uh, Branford being very proactive and getting. After that ball, no matter what. Yes, love that. I was just about to actually mention that. I love that Kieran Bowles there was just going after that ball, almost making sure that it goes 
foul per se. I accidentally hit it the other way, but it does still say foul regardless. And the one thing that you, you have to appreciate, even though that we are in eighth place right now in Brantford, is the fact is you play the game because you love it. You play the game because you have the hustle and heart for it. And that is a display of passion to the game. And knowing that, hey, we, we won the last two games. Uh, one was uh, was against Barry, and the other one was against Toronto. Two different, vastly different teams, in my opinion. Yeah. So why not go after Glow? Why why not, you know, try our best to do what we can to keep this streak going? Because if you if you got a hot streak and people are feeling it, there's you're you're going to be a dangerous team. And especially during a season where it seems like only one team's been really dominant this year, which has been well in. And well, and uh, just wanted to give a little shout out to uh, your aerial shots that I've seen on your social media platforms. Uh, it looks stunning of your field and well, and uh, you guys have definitely done a terrific job with your in-game experience and seeing that, I think you guys call it, if you refer it as the pond, as the pond has been filled each game full of jackfish fans. I think the sump's starting to get a little irritated. I want to give, I wanna give uh, uh, accommodation here to Wellen, too. They are trying to get Wellen native Paul Bissonnette to throw the first pitch. That would be really That see. would. One bar down, guys. Uh, Pink Whitney, guys. That'd be pretty cool to see. That'd be big for right. Wellen Jackfish, too. So I wish you guys uh, the best of luck in trying to get him. He is a very good one. Well, he out. I'm two away now for the uh, Guelph Royals. But yes, uh, going out for big names to kind of come out to your ball games. The field it's a great marketing strategy, and, and me being in the marketing business for sports, I can really appreciate that. Another Guelph Royal player, not impressed with us at that. Yes. What happened? Yeah, Nick, it's like what you said there. Another Guelph Royals player taking that bat to the wall back there. Couple of frustrating at bat straight for him. There's another time called there by the hitter. Cranford fans not happy with all the timeouts so far. Yeah. Probably a record breaking one inning. <laughs> Still 4 3 Royals with two away. Uh, runners on first and second. That first one coming in there is a strike. What a beautiful curveball that was. Chris Robinson. Is now up. Owen won the count against Chris Robinson. Two away. Runners on first and second. The Royals. We saw you pause there, Nick. You wanted that strike call, eh? Yeah, a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. A little bit. Yep. I I was I was about to say, oh, now it's zero two, and then uh, yeah, umpire um, does um, umpire does call that one a little high though. Even count one and one. Umpire certainly uh, threw me a curveball, anyways. Sue Craig going after, and it's a pop up. It looks like it's going to be in the foul territory at third base. In play, too. Oh, you know what? In that part of the field, too, the lighting isn't quite all there either. So it's a tough spot. It was a junior down there at third, too. He was looking for a little bit of redemption there to get the, the Red Sox out of the top of the fifth. But, you know what, kudos to him still to get out oh, there. Yeah. You can definitely see that he no, has been called up, though, right? Because yeah. he's over there. He's, he's jittery. He really wants to make that play. And, you know, he's, and that's, he's got heart. And that's not an easy play, too. He's looking up into the lights, too. The moment you look up into those lights and you're done for on any catch, doesn't matter where you are. A nice crack to left field. That's going. Will it go? And it gets caught. It got caught by the left fielder as he face plants out in left field. And they're going to go and check yeah. on him here real quick. He's down. Michelle, the trainer for the Red Sox, is bolted out to left field right now. They're just going to make sure that he's okay. He gets up. And he's up. And he's up before Rochelle Trainer could even get out there. That would not have felt great. Face plan right in the chain link fence. There she goes with the run back. I'll tell you, she runs faster than I do. What a great catch to left field. 
And we're happy to see him doing well. As it's still 4 3, 12, going to the bottom of the fifth, as I said, midway through the sixth, we'll do an MLB report. As the only other game that was supposed to happen in the league, London has been ringed out and postponed for a later date. We're going to lead things off for the Red Sox, bottom of the fifth, 4 3 Royals. That last uh, side of the inning ended by a, an amazing catch to left field as he face plants or face planted into the chain link fence. Going after that one, nice, pokes it into the empty slot there in the end. Gets on first. Destiny hitter number 12, Jeremy. Thank you. Jeremy Boo. For the Red Sox. One runner on first. Nice rip, but the pitch will get there. What? Throws in the second to get that one out. But Jeremy may use safe at first. Miles Pitcher uh, wasn't so stable on his feet. And he threw that. Second baseman had to hop up a little bit and then get me just to put his foot on the bag before uh Kieran Bowles got there. Yeah, Mom didn't show that he was out straight away, so he said step on the bag just to make sure. Exactly. Nick Burdett now up with Jeremy Vayu on first. One away from that force out to second. Nick Burdett is eager up at the plate tonight, especially in this at bat later on in the game. Owen won the count. Low inside, ball, one and one. So just to go over the games happening tomorrow, London is in Barry. It is a 4.05 p.m. start against the Bay Cats, the Gishman Panthers. Are in Guelph to take on the Royals at 7.30 p.m. And then to cap the night off, it's Toronto. It's coming to town here in Brantford to play the Red Sox. 8 p.m. start at Arnold Anderson Stadium. And the runner is safe over at first off of the uh, attempted pickoff. Yes. Thank you, Andrew. The Sunday stretch here this weekend. That one's a called strike right there. Just yeah. out, just on the outside corner there. One and two to count. Sunday, July 16th, Welland is in Toronto. The play is going to Maple Leafs at 2 p.m. Barry Baycats are in Hamilton to take on the Cardinals at 2.05 p.m. And then the Brantford Red Sox are in the kitchen. Take on the Panthers for a rare 5.15 p.m. start. You know, with, uh, speaking of, we got an even count now, 2-2 two to two on that last pitch being just a bit outside. Under or over on the full count? Full. full. Every time, full. Just I have a feeling. Oh, never mind. Both of us were wrong. I'm never saying... Anything there again? Don't sell it short. Christian. 
To sub down. Christian to sub down. It's all good. We'll get it next time. There'll probably be half a dozen still left. We've already had a lot of three two counts as it is, so. Nice to take a break. Exactly. Exactly. Two away now. Runner on first for the Red Sox. Phil, 4 3 Royals. In a very tight knit game here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. And again, it's Christmas in July. We had Santa Claus throughout the first pitch, and we've had Christmas music between innings. We just couldn't get the snow. No, but we, we had a little bit of rain in the sun, which is kind of weird. Today, it's just been a weird night overall. We got Santa Claus thrown out the first pitch. We're saying it's Christmas and it's July. We had rain when it was sunny, and that is a foul. One and one the count. Off the ground and off the elbow guard. Not so funny for the bunny bone. Yeah. Might make you laugh, but you won't want to laugh. Mm -hmm. I whimper when mine gets hit. Yeah, sometimes I can be a limp. I can say the same about myself. Don't even worry. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. I actually wailed it off of my work van at work this week. It was not fun. Oh, no. I don't know what that guy was doing, but all I felt was the van making a connection to my elbow. Not nice. And that's up the middle. Shortstop fielding that one nicely. As he's touching up on second, it's in the fifth inning. Now we go to the top of the sixth. Four, three, Royals. Leading off the six for the Royals, the second baseman, number 98, Kyle Cush. And we're back. Top of the six, Kyle Cush leading things off for the Royals. It's 4-3 Royals. Jeremiah Sucre has been putting out a pretty solid performance tonight. He's been fantastic so far. Can't ask for much more from him. And honestly, the two runs that come in there, those 
aren't earned for him. That was off of an error. He's really only given up one run through five. Exactly. As Kyle Cush gets set to lead things off for the Royals. Well, it looks like we have a pitching substitution, though. New pitcher. He looks like Gus Wilson. You want to say? But anyways. Oh, I think I think it was straight. Who no, no. Oh, now we got a fan chant off here. Love to see the kids getting involved in the third base fence line. That's another sh that's a strike. Two and one to count. I know I wanted it to be strike two as well. But we'll have to settle for two and one. We top push now. Two and one. Kids are getting louder. We have some spirit now in Arnold Anderson Stadium. As he pulled that fun fact. Three and one. It counts. Three and one to count to Kyle Cush. Top of the six. And it's a little blue boat to left field. Left field is underneath it and catches that one. One away. Center fielder number nine, Jaden Williams. The kids are still going. J.D. Williams now taken to the box with the Royals. And the kids are out in full force cheering the Sox on. And they just get louder and louder. You got to love it. You can even see one of the backup players just going over. And as he goes over, they get louder and louder. Great fan support here in Brantford, always. That next one, batter checked his swing in time. It's going to be 2-0. Oh. Line wall. base. Nice grip, but that's foul down the third base. Ball. One away against the Royals here. And this is the man here that I like to call Christmas Sleeve. Called him Christmas Sleeve in the last at bat, and it's just fitting for tonight's game. There you go. It's like he planned it. I'll bet you he did. I said it in the first inning. I think he planned it. Love the spirit here in tonight's game. It's 4-3. Royals still a close game. Wow, that curve. That was a nice, what appeared to be inside pitch, then straightened it out down the middle. Almost a boomerang pitch, as I like to call it. Mm -hmm. Two and two, the count one away against the Royals. Still 4 3, top of six. Well. Got away from him just a little bit. And there you go. There's your full count. See if they can keep it going throughout the entire half inning here. It would be very impressive if they did. J.D. Williams is all over it right now. He is desperate to get something out there and get something going. J.D. Williams giving those kids a look, actually, in fact. Yeah. 
And they hear, and he hears them too. Believe me, they're not quiet out there. You can hear them. Oh yeah. Let's go, socks. Oh, crack up to center field. And he gets it! Does he know? Oh, just, just gets, gets by it. Who goes all the way up to the wall. Batter's going to think about third here. J.D. Williams with a triple. He's in there at third, standing up. J.D. Williams with a nice triple. His desperation paid off. Shortstop number two, Some very enthusiastic fans here tonight in tonight's game. Always making the game. It's on both sides. Yes, both sides. Always making the game more enjoyable, in my opinion. Absolutely. Yeah, very enthusiastic tonight. Kudos for the outgoingness means sportsmanship towards the Royals. Owen oh, won the count, one away. JD Williams on third after a nice triple to who was it, left center field? Pretty much the deepest part of the ballpark. Yes. Fox straight up by the shaft. Back catcher not able to make the catch. Well, visibly upset because it was called a foul. They're going to bring the umpires in here just to talk about this one. Discussions being done. And it's called a foul ball, much to the dismay here of the Gulf Royals dugout. Things cool. getting a little heated between the two dugouts. We'll be keeping an eye on that too as we near the end of this game. Right now, 0 2 count, one away here. The batter's going to get a new bat here too. Maybe that'll make a difference. Very true. And there is still uh, J.D. Williams, obviously, on third base here. J.D. Williams, still on third. One two count right there, and the pitch low and away. J.D. Williams on third. So you know, it's going to be foul down that third base side. One and two the count. Well. 
one. Connor Morrow. Cracks that one to shortstop. Shortstop throwing it to home. But that gets the segment. What a play! Yeah, that's that's Bradford doesn't like the clown on home. And they are going to check it. Bradford, Red Sox, very uh, disappointed. Hey, yeah, he's up. Prediction number 40, David Mendham. David Mendham now. What? Still quite the play the first. You got the uh, batter out there. Oh. Five three Royals. <laughs> the bad boy for Guelph just launched that. So we'll one well, of the Brantford players. <laughs> Good arm. My gosh, fantastic. He might be on the big boy team sooner rather than later. Two away now against the Welsh Royals. Rips it and ricochets up first base fence long long. Well, one's popped up. Center fielder's ranging in on it. And that's going to be the third out of this inning here. Okay. Well, so, since the MLB report. Where's all left on base? Um, I see. Yeah, that's the third base. Okay, so from around the MLB, the San Diego Padres received the Columbia Phillies in the San Francisco Giants, the Stevens, the Pittsburgh scored. Miami Marlins are down 3-1 to one to the eighth against Baltimore in Baltimore. The Arizona Diamondbacks fall seven. Just the Toronto Blue Jays in Toronto. Toronto now with a 51-41 and 41 record. Dodgers def defeat the One of their New York Mets in New York City. Six 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 three. Three. Milwaukee Brewers defeat the Cincinnati Reds in Cincinnati. The Jays got a dog against the Sox. Against the Atlanta Braves in Atlanta. The Mets defeat the Red Sox in Atlanta. The Red Sox defeat the Red Sox in Atlanta. The Red Sox defeat the Red Sox the Boston Red Sox are winning against the. Uh, what I mean, parents, you know, we're not affiliated to the Boston Red Sox. Say the Philadelphia situation for tonight. Boston clothing and Boston Red Sox here. Seven of their runs, five of the five of uh, sorry, seven of the runs. All of them have come by of a home run, and there have been six home runs in that game. Two of them by Rafael Devers. Thank you for the quick facts. The Cleveland Guardians are trailing 7 4 in the bottom of the seventh in Texas against the Rangers. The Nationals, uh, the Washington Nationals and St. Louis Cardinals game has been delayed. I would assume weather related. Yeah, and they are currently bottom of the third inning. Oh, so they've, they've, they've started. started, yeah. And uh, so. With that being said, we're going to get started. Bob the six. I will continue. Yeah, we'll be updating. Curry for thirty nine. Simmons Curry. Jason Curry leading things off for the Rampart Red Sox. I almost said Boston. Got the junior. Just talking about Boston. It's okay if you insist. Uh, and it's okay. I had to catch myself a couple times. We'll start with the B. That's true. I give you a pass. I oh, appreciate that. I don't know about our uh, viewers, though. No, they can give us a hard time. They're allowed oh, to. Yeah. They're allowed to. It's in their job description. The first. <laughs> Whether they come from the way or home. So the junior, Murray, 
Just pop some plates. He's had some good bats though, Murray has. He's been able to take a lot of pitches. I always find that with these juniors. He was eager to get going on that one and goes after the first one. Oh, and one. He was, and this actually kind of counters what I was just about to say, but he's been taking a lot of pitches. And I've noticed this a lot with the juniors that come up to these guys. Like, they're ready. They're able to take pitches. And they're seeing 90, 95 sometimes coming in at him. These guys are under 18. The fact that they can even make contact with 90, 95 being under 18 like that is nothing short of incredible. I it couldn't. Is. I couldn't at that age. No way. Jeez. And I think by the time, ooh, broken bat on the play to third, third baseman throwing it over, but and it's going to be thrown away. away. And Murray's going to second. He's utilizing that fourth throw from third. It is a double. Great heads up play by Murray there to see if that ball's gone away and to get to second. That that double from Murray costed him three hundred and fifty bucks. It's the number four. Tachi Nakamura. Tachi Nakamura. Now up. It'd be very interesting to see him poke something out because he has strength beyond his power. And I feel like just the, the sheer height of him, he's, a, he's able to get this torque where it's hips and his shoulders. He's able to crank it wherever he wants. And he, he almost does it too in one fluid motion. Like it's all together. And you wouldn't think based off of seeing that swing, but it's an all one fluid motion back there. Exactly. We just saw it come in full force there. Is that was foul back? Made a nice little thing sound off the uh, pole. That's how you know it was hit hard when you hear that ding. He is eager. He is wanting a good hit here. Being patient. And there it is. That height right there. Any other batter, that's a strike. For sure. One and one to count. Two. Murray and Nakamura. Murray on second. Takes that for a little bit of a rep. That Again, one's foul. Go out of play just down that third base side there. Count's going to be one and two. One or two, Tachi. Yeah. Awkward There's swing. One out. Jesse Fishbaum now up to plate. That's one that Tachi Nakamura is going to walk back. I'm sure. Didn't want to swing at it, but he was already through, and there was no way that he was going to be able to stop that swing. Happens a lot of the times on those high pitches when they go away like that. Hitter's just trying to get in on it. See that little two-seamer goes away from him, and those are tough to hit if you're a short guy. Exactly. Ooh, inside. No big inside. No harm, no foul there. One and oh. So as we're getting set for the next pitch, we only had a few more games to go through that we were towards. The New York Yankees are trailing 4-2 to two against the Colorado Rockies in Colorado, 4-2. The Houston Astros are down 2-0 against the LA Angels. 2-0 count now on that ball outside. In Anaheim, the Twins lead 2-0 bottom of the second in Oakland against the Athletics. The Tigers up 2-0. And Seattle against the Mariners. Top first. So, you know, two and one to count. Strike out. That one, it's a little awkward. First baseman, not in and time. He's gonna get there. Go here. And fish bomb are real. You can tell too that that first baseman, he wanted his pitcher to be there. And you see the picture too, just go over right here. Should have been there. Cool. Yep. He knows. He knows. Very tense himself, especially the 
for me. Now you're putting up an opportunity here. So if for example, say we'll run here, right after it comes up, run. He's right, 15, 5 to 3. Exactly. So I don't know, would you consider that last play almost an error of sorts? I know it's a very gray area. Yeah. And that's and it. Frank Hirsch. Cases are loaded, and he is in a bit of agony a little bit. But as I like to say, we got ice. The ice Frank, it's right next to the clock. <laughs> It's gonna have a bruise on there tomorrow morning, but that was a loud thug too. Short sub number 49. Yes. That was the uh oh. a basketball coming in here. They're gonna have a little chat with him here. This is our logos here for Brandford with one away. A good idea for them to just get pitcher in the right head space here. I'm facing a pretty good hitter here in Gus Wilson. I still feel like this pitch is going to be kept in, but the uh, umpire is saying, hey, man, let's get the thing going. In a first saying, let's get the thing going. Like, yeah. <laughs> you and I have both long, hard days at work, and, you know, hey, we do love doing this. We want to keep going. Continuous action for our lovely supporters. Exactly. Here we go. Yeah. Nobody likes a dragged on game. Darren, still up on the mound, Jerry. That first pitch from him is low, ball one. One and oh. Now back. Oh. And again, Red Sox fans, tomorrow night, the Toronto Maple Leafs are in town to play your Red Sox 8 p.m. start time here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. And then Brantford's on the road to Jack Couch Park, home to the Kitchener Panthers. That game starts at 5.15. And another pitch low there, 2-1. and one. Tough one for Wilson. Wilson looking at the umpire a little bit, like, hey man, if I had it loaded my gut out, I'd probably would have hit it. But, however, the dumb league's final call is now two and two. One away, bases loaded for the Red Sox, an opportunity here to get some runs. So, how's that one back? Gus Wilson staying alive. Count will remain two and two here. Two and two, Gus Wilson. Bases loaded, one away, five, three Royals. Top five and six. Takes that for a little rip. Roll blue, ball land. You're going to drop. Lands. Yeah, if that continues here. Still only one away. And we've, we've seen a couple times now. First baseman here. Trying to make a difference for the Royals. Hasn't been able to here, though. That foul ball, you never know. It's kind of a tough night when you're trying to do all the right things, and either it's a drop ball, which, you know, happens yep. time to time, or your pitcher's not getting over to first base where he's needed. Oh, for sure. First one definitely wasn't first baseman's fault. Second one there, you almost want him to almost backpedal in and get that one, not run straight for Kingston. Nice rip up the middle! That's a base. That's going to score a couple runs at least! As we tie the game up, it is 5-5. Five, 5-6, five. Five Gus Wilson with a two-run RBI. Safe at first. My apologies if I became all of a sudden too loud. 
But it's very exciting to see good baseball here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. Runners on first and second, only one away. It is a tie game. A brand new ball game, I like to call it. The catcher number 11, Karen. Oh. Here comes Karen. Oh, it's been playing. Oh, no. Do it again. Looking to get Brantford Red Sox lead here. Five five, bottom of the six. An exciting game here in Arnold Anderson Stadium in downtown Brantford. He's looking to get second base runner, but that people thinking that it looks like a block, but which honestly he, he did look quite awkward getting off the rubber there. Always umpires call at the end of the day. Yes. We will always reiterate that in this podcast. Exactly. And he's out at third. Still have a runner on first. Don't know what they were thinking there, sending the uh, one from second. I would have capped him with only one away. Yeah, me too. Jim Bowles looking to shake things up here. Doss Wilson on first. Doss Wilson with a conservative lead off on first. A little bloop over the fan tried to catch that, but that didn't quite work out. You know, the hand you can hear that one from up here. My wrist is all right. Yeah, no kidding. Two and one the count against Bowles with Gus Wilson on first. Pickoff attempt to Wilson. Wilson in. is in. See? Apologies, folks. It is a one one count here. Don't know why it said two and one, but yeah, one one. We're really? trying to get him out. And he's in there safely. You're scared of the speed. He is pretty quick, but not enough to the point where you need to throw over four times. And the fans here really want to balk here. You can just hear them from up here. They so need they to balk. Bought it, but they're seeing that the pitch was balked a couple of times and it's not been called. Inside pitch. It's a 2 1 count now. It's a different atmosphere when both benches seem to be high tension. And not only that, but fans are certainly getting into it tonight. And it's interesting too because. Both benches, they really, sh they like, yeah, I think it's just because it's a close game. Both teams are going to be in tension here. Yeah. And the fans didn't want the block on that one. That one was a clean transition, though. No. That one was a nice, clean transition. The other one's a little bit on the iffy side, but again, it's always ump's call at the end of the day. Right. And it's not. And hey, nice little poke up the middle. Will it drop? 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 Yeah. <laughs> It dropped Gus Wilson advances the third. Runners on the corner. Looks like Jeremy Bayou will be up next for the Red Sox. Runners on the corners, two away. Bob of the six, five, five here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. This is the Gulf Oils game. Red Sox. <laughs> Runners on the corners for the Brantford Red Sox. Jeremy Bayou takes that high inside ball one. Well outside. 
low outside and away. Two and oh. Three, two away. Five, five here in Brantford. Now, I know that this happened a bit ago in the inning, but are Guelph going to live to regret that one mistake over at first base between the pitch or just a miscommunication? Actually, you know what? That is very much a pivotal moment in the game. Kind of takes me back to, uh, what was it, 2016. It was called the seventh inning. or It was between Texas and Toronto where Texas was just falling apart defensively. And Gus got into the mind of Darren a little bit on the mound. Threw him off a little bit when Gus was trying to make an advance to home plate. All mental game now, with the game being so close and so tied. Now, I know Jeremy Bay is a very good hitter here. Make the pitcher work for the strike. Exactly. Do not swing. That's my number one rule. It's been my rule since day one. Do not swing at the 3 0. Unless. Yeah. Oh, it's 3 0. I did not realize. Unless that. you get a. 40 mile an hour curveball down the middle, which does not happen in this exactly. league. These guys are too good to be thrown long. Exactly. And it looks like this pitcher is a little nervous throwing it to Bayou right now. He's really trying to go after anything lead that you make him work for that. First one's a strike. Now now he's got the green light to go. 3 1 count now. And exactly, as you said, now he's got the green light. Bayou looking to make a difference here for the Red Sox. Runners on the corners. It's 5 5. Swings that one. Old town. Old count here, folks. Three, two, two away, and runners this are on the be corners. A massive payoff. Five, five game. Here it is. Oof. Leaves two on the bases, but the. Oh, and that was some. Uh... Dirty language right there, but we won't repeat any of it there. No. He wasn't happy about that one. He wasn't happy, you could tell. It's one error and spin left on base. Yeah, there, though. He's got to shake that off. Don't let it get to you going into the bottom of the ninth. Don't let that get to you going even into the seventh, eighth, ninth inning. Finish out the game. That one at bat isn't going to justify the game. We want to play. We want to find Richard. And folks, we'll be right back here for the top of the seventh inning in just a few moments. It sucks baseball. Wait, Christmas in July. Folks, just a little bit of an MLB update here. The Texas Rangers have completely opened the door here on the Cleveland Guardians. The scoring now is 9-4 instead of the original 4-2 from last time. 
Five five heading to the bottom of the seventh inning. And sorry, folks, it's actually now eleven to four as Adolis Garcia, who is in the home run derby, just did a thing that he knows how to do pretty well. Hit home runs, two run shot there, eleven to four. The MLB update presented to you by Adrian. Oh, what? Want to know the count? One and all the count as much as we. There it is, one and one. Malik Collyborn. One and one the count against him. You can tell these umps too. They've been great tonight too. That first pitch, 100% of ball. That pitch, 100% of ball. And the other one had just caught the corner. I think these umps have been great tonight. I don't know what the benches are going just because it's a close game. Yeah, it's just close. Tensions are riding high here. And you can just look look at some of these players here jitting their legs around it. And it's definitely not because they're cold. It's just the anxious feeling, right? Even us back here, you got my foot tap. Yeah, high, right? I'm anticipating to see, well, for me, anyways, it'll be my first win. Yeah, it's, if, if, uh, if they win tonight. So, I don't want to say what our record together as a duo is, but. It, like I said, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If, <laughs> if they lose tonight, I might have to resign because I'm obviously the bad luck to. And there's a swing and miss right there, strike three. <laughs> One away. Obviously, uh, Red Sox fans, you know, uh, I hate to be the bad luck charm for the rest of the season. So, but hoping for a win tonight so I can stay on as a broadcaster for your beloved Red Sox. <laughs> Down low. Andrew thinking that was very much a strike, eh? I like to stay as unbiased as possible. But folks, that was a strike. Just as a moment ago, you're saying that the officer are doing a fantabulous job. Not on that pitch. Not on that pitch, sir. That's that's uh, that I think though to be honest I will say that's the one big that's the one the I one think, big one odd call yeah you're not that's the one on call yeah everything else I've been perfectly in tune with in fact there were seven innings through and I'm saying that that's pretty good mm -hmm. here we go sorry we moved to two one there we go we moved to two one count they read our minds we wanted a strike we got it telepathic communication to the umps here there it is. Into baseball gods. I said hitter calls time here. That's in there for another strike, two and two. One away, no one on base for the Guelph Royals. It is still 5 5. This could be a really good turning point in the season if we do secure this win here. Absolutely. I actually, you know what? How about this? Well, instead of saying if, I, I'll say when we secure this win that morning. Just to have positive affirmation for the universe here. So hopefully gift us a really nice, uh, well-deserved, in my opinion, if, if they keep playing like this, win for Bramford because yeah. they have been in it since the very start. And we've seen it from time to time where, say, the away team scores one run in that inning. And then sometimes what I see is, as there's a walk right there, looks like there'll be a mound visit, though. So like I was saying is there's been some games that Brantford's played where they let one run in the first inning, and then the next one it's three, the next one it's four, the next one back down. But the thing is, the one thing I like is that defensively they've stayed consistent. Oh, yeah. Right? And then offensively, no, it was hit and miss, but guess what? They got the job done to tie the game. Yeah. If you look at the last couple of games here where they've played, you see the 20 to 15. You don't, it's not ideal to be giving up for 15 runs there, but a close 4 to 3 game where really starting pitcher 
We gave up one month. Like, when you really look at it, it's the same thing here. Time started to get sure Jeremiah's soup, right? He only gave up the one run. It's looking like a very much, and I know, Nick, you weren't here for this game, but it's looking very much like a repeat, just a tiny bit higher scoring of the Grand for Toronto game that we had on Monday. It's like that, and hopefully, with that being said, that we get a win straight. And it looks like Danny Vlad is on the mound now for the Red Sox to hopefully be the closer. Thanks. You're the for them in the 4-3 game, where he only gave up one run, struck out six through six innings. Hopefully that momentum is carried on for today. It's been four, uh, sorry, five days since last game. Warm-up pitches here, and that was a nice sound pitch right there. I think he's getting the result in the living room. He's looking exactly the way that he did on Monday here. That is positive. Reinforcement that that's going to be a Except positive. for the one play, but I know some of us saw that where he missed the ball off of the exchange. It's okay. It happens. Oh, yeah. It happens. It happens to the best of them. So but no, pitches, like that, pitches yeah. look crisp. Yes, pitches look absolutely crisp on Danny Howitt right now. And if they can stay crisp throughout this game, you could argue he could go three. Exactly. But I don't want to see him go three. I would like to see him go about one to two innings here. No more than that. Safe situation. Get the closer in there. Folks, this will be the last warm-up pitch for Danny Howitt. Yes, I didn't see that. One more. Yeah, he's got one more. Get one more. My fault, folks. He's got one more. Yeah. Back to game time here. Great footer number 28. Ethan Hammond. Ethan Hammond now for the Golf Royals. Set to take on Danny Halat for the first time tonight. Runner on first for Guelph. One away. It is still a tied game here at five. It is 10 to 11. Top of the seventh. One away. Just got away on him a little bit there. Doesn't call it ball. Goes for that one. Second base now. Catches that one. Fields in the second. Goes to first. <laughs> what an amazing double play to get the Bradford Red Sox to the bottom of the seven. Nothing across. Yeah. Let's just check in here. Just to, oh, and here come the benches. Here they come. Benches cleared a little bit here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. It's everybody. A little bit of a ruckus at second base. And it seems to be off of the slide in the second there. He seems to have gone in there. And there's Nick Burdett there, just making sure things get calm on that side. No one's going to go after Burdett over on that side. And here we go. Words are Holy being crap. Said. Here we go, folks. Some words are being thrown between Guelph and Bradford now. Benches are cleared. I have never seen this in person before. This is quite the experience for me. It's a broadcaster. Now a little bit of shove and push here. Hey, let's play some baseball, guys! But it really does seem like... Uh, and the crowd's getting into it now. Yeah. Some ejections happening now. Ejections. Some Guelph players getting involved. Some players having to be held back now.
folks. It was number 24 here that ended up getting ejected from this game. And it will be more. Lengthy delay here. Both teams have come out onto the field here. A couple of ejections on the Guelph and on the Brantford side. And a fan has been ejected Fans from this ejected. one, folks. And I've never, never before seen uh, actions here at the ballpark. It is a Brantford fan. <laughs> The 34 here is pleading his case with the ump on the fan. I don't think the fan. I think it's more or less maybe the, one of the fellow players. Yeah, that's Evan Ryan down there. He might have gotten tossed. Go on, check the live stream and see what's going on. 71. Stand out and stretch it out. But oh, what an incredible play. He's going to sing, pick me up to the double game. We almost forgot about the double play, folks. We're going to get all the ejections sorted out and everything here, including the fan. And we'll be right back, folks, in just a couple moments. This is Red Sox Baseball. It's 5-5 going on the bottom of the seventh. Let's go, Sox. Hey, we're back to the model of the seventh. Yeah. Nick Burnett leading things off of the Red Sox. After a heated exchange between the Royals and Red Sox, I think that's the first time we've seen the benches go this season there. Yeah. Like now, I think in the IBL, if they have gone off about once this season, and that's like, you know. It's typical, but very but, not not here though. What happened? Nice pull to center field. Pull it down. It's caught first out, but great pull by Nick Burdad. Yeah, great catch there by the center fielder too. Slid, slid, slid timely. Let's see the one out. And he's able to eat some play this. You gotta think if he slides in there and doesn't time that right, that's going to the wall. In fact, we don't know what could happen if it gets to the wall. Blown away, ball one. I don't know. For those of you just joining, we just got out of a fairly heated situation between the Royals and Red Sox. There was uh, a slide in the second base and what seemed to have been some contact between either second base or shortstop. 
in the base runner, and the base runner was very disgruntled by it. And it seemed like the base runner was just trying to say, oh, didn't mean to get into him. But whenever something like that happens, dugouts are always going to care. Oh, yeah. Nice poke up to the second uh, baseman. Second baseman filling those. There's another out. Two outs, two away. Man, and we keep getting interrupted by all these hits. But, no, oh, it just seemed like the runner slid into what really mean this man to him. It's one of those things, the close game, it's a tie game still at 5 to 5 here. We're in the 7th inning. My apologies there, folks, as we were all distracted from everything going on. Exactly. But yeah, so Justin Murray's up now for the Sox, and he's poking that down to first, but he's just taking that. Yeah, in well, you don't even need to run on that one. That just went straight to the first exactly. baseman there. That's the third out, but. You know that Justin is going to get some stick from the coach. You can see the first base coach coming up here. He's about to come up and tell him, hey, hustle down that line. Oh, I mean, that's three outs in the inning here. Very quick, top of the seventh inning, bottom of the seventh inning here, I should say. So we head to the top of the eighth inning. And again, we'll be right back, folks, in just a couple of moments because we still haven't even explained what happened in the last inning. Exactly. Okay, so how about this? Well, we'll keep talking here. But there we go. Like, so, well... So essentially what happened is that uh, I think things were taken a too personally you know, at second base. And as soon as they started talking, one player from Ramford started trying to back up the guy. And then the guy backed up the ball. So the sisters, all the rest started following. So, uh, and it was quite a huge exchange. And we're just happy our mic's not able to pick up what the players were putting down. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of vulgar swearing going on in the field. A fan was ejected from the ballpark. Uh, multiple ejections throw. And to be completely honest, like it, it, I know it's, it's, it's sport. You know, to be a broadcaster, it's one thing. To be up here and experiencing the game from the booth. But from being down in the field, I understand being heated. But you yeah. also have to have that thick skin to be able to walk away. Because, you know, refs anymore. But not refs. Just, I keep saying refs. It's not refs, it's ups. Come on, get my sports <laughs> correct here. Right? Come on. Sheesh, it's your first day back and you're not doing well. Um, but anyways, um these ups are aren't having it. No, they they aren't having it. They're not gonna let this type of stuff happen. You can see even too umpire kind of on that far right side. Looking like a younger guy too. So you gotta think that that's gotta be one of his first benches clearings in what he's had. Maybe not his first one, but definitely a guy me. Oh, that's his first one for sure. 100%. I, I, I call that a character development for that kid. And, and you know, if you want to be an umpire and, and have a league like this, yep. especially when there's so many different ethnic, uh, ethnic, geez, I can't speak. Uh, ethnic backgrounds, right? Yep. So, uh, you know, the for the just the great silver, this team, players come from Puerto Rico and Dominican. But there's different, yeah, there's different levels of, okay, my fuse is going to go. Yeah. yeah, right? But like I say, and I keep saying, yes, we work in hockey. During the hockey season, but uh, I tell players too. It's like, listen, don't draw stupid penalties, and, I, and it's same with baseball. Don't draw stupid ejections. Don't don't make it so it's so consequential for your team. Uh, don't don't make it so that your team's got to pay for your uh, for your dumb behaviors and, and, and conducting yourself on the field. So on during the hockey season, what I like to tell my players is that, hey, I want you to get it under the skin. But when he gets he, when he tries to do that to you, walk away. Right? It's it's a big mental thing, and I understand it. We're up here in the booth; they're yeah. down there experiencing it, the raw emotions down there. But we gotta try to keep in mind that hey, this is a ball game. We got kids here, right? Exactly. It, it it's fun to see yeah. it sometimes, but more or less at the more professional level, and you know the fans aren't so intimate yeah. with the game itself too. I'm just not. Yeah. So, but anyways, it's been resolved. It is the well, maybe top of maybe not just yet. As the umpire just looks over at the Gulf Royals bench, there probably disagreeing on that last pitch was called strike one and two account against this Royal batter. That one looks. The umpire definitely let him letting him know we've ejected two of your guys already. If not more, we'll do it again. Exactly. And that's the one thing I respect with umps uh, from time to time is when they take immediate action and they say, listen, enough is enough. This is our game to conduct, not yours. And that's in there. Now it's uh, two and two, the count. Danny Huat's just giving it everything he's got. 
Right? I count now, actually. Three and two. My favorite count of them all, as we all know. Got a lot of them tonight. Day off. That's going to be ball four. Well, batter walk to first. Left fielder number 19, Chris Robinson. Chris Robinson now. For the Guelph Royals, runner on first, no outs, top of the eighth. It is still five to five. So, again, a little word of advice to anyone that comes to games where there's bench brawls is we highly suggest you don't get involved on the fan level because you, too, can find yourself on the end of an objection. Yep. And that's a valuable lesson, as we have seen here tonight. These umpires, we, we saw it already. They're not afraid to eject the fans. And if you're a little too rowdy, they'll uh, they'll come for you there. As there's a bunch shown, it's going to be fouled back. Even count now, one and one. One and one, no outs. Runner on first is five to five here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. Next home game tomorrow night, 8 p.m. start here at Arnold Anderson Stadium when we host the Toronto Maple Leafs. A nice swing and strike there, one and two to count. I'm going to hope to not see a benches clearer in uh, that one. Because that one was also a very close-knit game this past Monday on a makeup heat. Yeah, not as much uh, benches clearing stuff, but yes. It was a clean, uh, it was a clean close game, and you know what? It's nice when you see those single digits uh, scores, right? Two and two the count, no outs, one Runner on first. Danny Hoat looking to get the first batter here. And it's there! Danny Hoat with a strikeout. One away. With a strikeout. Um... Baseman number 98, Kyle Cush. Kyle Cush taking the box for the Royals. After Chris Robinson strikes out against Danny Hoat. Runner on first one away, top of the eighth. Still a brand new ball game out there. It's anyone's game for the taking. That's in there as a the ball. Back catcher doing some framework, but as we said multiple times throughout the night, is that the oh, sir, buying the framework tonight? No, not at all. Pickoff play there, but he's going to be in there safely. Mm -hmm. And it's a very unique situation here. A lefty throwing Danny Hoat with a better advantage over a right-handed thrower. Being able to just look at that first base runner. And the first base runner with a conservative leadoff on his first. That one is just bolted over the uh, defense line. Right over the Brantford Red Sox dugout. Danny I just want to say about Danny Hoat, we can hear it from up here. He's got the grunt. Oh, yeah. That's how you know that. He throws hard, and he's trying to throw hard and accurate. This guy's a super track VA engine. But... No grunt on that one, but nope. the outside, two and one. This was a little bit off speed there. Try to get him a little bit. I notice it with Bawat. He grunts whenever he throws hard, two-seam, or four-seam. And the one thing that I was told... And there's a nice clean strike. Two and two. On the perturb. Was that uh, when you're pitching on the mound and you're throwing, you want to just throw. You don't want to worry yeah. too much about the placement of the pitch. You want to throw and throw with aggression because when you throw and you throw with aggression and you, and you have the general vicinity, eight times out of ten, it's going to be a strike. Like right here. He's going to put one in here. Yeah, there it is. There's that grunt again, but that's going over the third base fence line as well. It is two and two. Against Kyle Cush, one away, base runner on first with a conservative lead, considering that Danny Hawat's just staring him down the whole time, trying to keep him at a moderate distance but, away from first. You know what? I called the last pitch, so I'm going to call it again. Really? I think I might. Slider. Set. Wasn't a slider there and wasn't a strike. Count goes full, three and two. Well, what? Shaking his arms a little bit, trying to get chitters out. It is a full count, one away. Kyle Fish looking to protect and keep it going for him. 
or to become the next base runner for the Royals. He gets that one, pokes it out to right center field. That gets down. Runners will advance to third and second. Austin Kyle Cush double to left center field. J.D. Williams. Center field number nine, J.D. Williams. Ums returning to their original postings. Now this is a time where, you know, well, you try to, to come up with an idea to do a double play somehow. But at the same time, this is where the being a lefty kind of sucks because it's like you got third base runner yeah. directly behind your back, right? So very much the same as right-handed yeah. thrower, but with first base team behind. The big thing though is that he's not going to go from third to home. That almost the highway doesn't really even have to worry about him per se. You just got to worry about the header. Exactly. A nice scoop and block there by Karen Balls to keep that from getting by him. It's now a two-zero count. This is where, you know, oh, wow. it's a mental thing. Daniel Watch needs to throw the way he has been. A nice poke up straight center field. Center fielder rushes in. And he gets he it. Gets he gets it. it. He gets what a catch. For the second out of the inning. What a great catch by the center fielder. He was rushing in. He had the wheels and the afterburns on. And then he had to slide on top of that. He probably it's traveled a good distance of 30 back. plus feet to, to, to get that. We've seen it all now this game. A couple of diving catches, benches clearing. We've gotten everything in this one, Nick. Exactly. A good return for yeah, you no to kidding. come into here. Jeez, what a night. <laughs> Typically, I, I'd be yawning a little bit right now just because, you know, the work day on top of this and, you know, waiting you up for that second out that you wanted. Exactly. And I swing, takes the swing of that one. 0 oh, and 1 count. Runners on third and second. And again, what a great play to the center fielder to get that one. He really wanted that one, but it's just low. 1 and 1 the count. It's that for a rip, but it ricochets off the third base fence line. It's foul. It is one and two the count. Take one. Connor Morrow now looking to protect and keep the inning going for the Royals. With runners on second and third. Connor looks eager. Leaves that one high and up. Two and two the count. Okay. Connor Morrow, Caledon native. Oh. Man, just being a batter and just knowing that the pitcher is grunting to such an extent that it sounds like he's lifting weights would just scare you enough to swing at a ball anyway. Yeah. Scary enough to swing at a hard ball coming at you 80, 90 miles an hour. Let alone have it be from Danny Howard. It's grunt. a full count to pay off. A nice poke to second base. Second baseman fields it over the first. And going to the bottom of the eighth. Still tied. 5-5. Five, five. This is oh, Red Sox baseball. Oh, 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 great track. Oh, oh, the eighth inning. It's Nick and it's Andrew. We'll be back.
Actually, Nakamura leading things out for the Bradford Red Sox. Bottom of the eight, tied five, five. Brand new ball game. Anyone's game. The Bradford bench getting it hyped. Got the sticks going early. In the bottom of the eighth. He goes out of that first one with an awkward swing. It's on one the count. Just a little bit late there. He wanted fastball and dipped down on him. So, like the way he swings, it's like he, he, he swings naturally, right? But then he scoops it right at the end. So it's so in tune now against Tachi. But like, you know how, like, he, oh, I see it though. He does like a little, almost like, he definitely wants to be the hero tonight. Like, oh, 100%. So, like, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to be the hero, but you also got to realize that base hits count just as much as home runs at this point. We just need to get players out there. Oh, high inside. And we hear the fans uh, continuing on here in Brantford. Always fun to hear fans get involved, but not too involved like that one fan earlier who got himself ejected. A nice close second baseman of the Royals fields out and we're actually out at first. Center fielder number 20, Messi Fishbone. Looks like uh, number 60, but no more the cuts. He's pitching for the death one. If I got this right, his hometown is San Carlo, Dominican Republic. He played with the Fubon Guardians of the Sea. Hell, and hello. All been by the pitcher. Fought. Out at first, two outs, two away. Pro experience uh, with the Fubon Guardians of the Sea. EPL. She got 21. I'm not baby here with two outs. Looking to get something going to the Red Sox. It would be really beneficial to at least have one runner after belt this inning to help you out going into the ninth. And so that you guys can really just close it off, right? So is there another MLB update here? Texas wins 12 to 4. Yonaheim solo shot. Pass ball. You know, by your mark. And it will be ball one, one and out. Okay. Not Fabian. Getting into the box again. One and hold the count. Two away. Five, five. Bottom of the eight. Yeah. Six a look at that one, but it's a strike. One and one the count. Fabian now giving the green light to go ahead. Poke something out there. I think uh, Omar is taking a rule out of the Danny Holak book. Yeah. With the grunt on the pitch, yeah. Thought Danny had that trademark. I wish we could trademark that to Danny, but unfortunately we can't. It's just those guys that throw hard. They love to do that. You see it along the major leagues, too. Like, you see all, almost every MLB guy, he runs just to be able to put that pitch on the corner in there. Takes a swing at it, and they're grunting for a certain spot, too. They're not just grunting to throw it hard, and they're grunting because they want it on that top left corner. Yeah. They want it on that bottom left corner. They want it. They want the batter to chase it and go after it. Yep. It's almost like a distraction to the hitter type of thing, in a way. In a way. A nice pull. Shortstop for the Royals fields it over the first. Will it be in time? No, it won't. Baby, it is safe one first. And don't doubt the speed of Matthew Fabian. He can go if he wants to. He doesn't need a coach to tell him. He doesn't need a base coach to tell him to. He'll do it on his own. Oh, yeah. Been able to see it in person a few times. He's got the wheels. Send the pitch count. Right. 
Throws back over, and he's in there safely. Matt Fabian has to be extremely careful on how he plays to be the first base runner because this pitcher looks like he's eager to get a pickoff at first. <gasps> Gus Wilson, however, looking to make a difference. And throughout the season, I've always seen him in the box, and he's always eager to make a difference offensively. So hopefully tonight is a difference maker for him as that's a low inside pitch for a ball. Want to know the count. And it's funny because we've seen Gus Wilson has gone deep once this year. He has. He has. He, he actually received the first home run for the Brantford Red Sox here at home this season. And let's see what he can do here. Nice rip! Deep! Left center field! Well, he's far from first! He's been waiting! He gets down! Yes, good! Right. I was gonna say Boston again! I lose my voice now. Six, five, Brentford! Off of a deep left center field hit by Gus Wilson, as we were just speaking before. Got him going yard once. <laughs> Triple, he didn't go yard, but he did the next best possible thing there. RBI double right there. Gus Wilson. Aaron Bowles, taken to the box. And by miracle, I still have my voice after that last call. <laughs> High fastball, ball. Aaron Bowles making him work for the strikes. And same with the umps. When you have a batter and an ump making you work for strikes, it's a lot more difficult to be a pitcher. You must be nervous or something. Tiny bit, tiny bit. Nice crack. A uh, foul. And that one off the end of a bat and foul down that third base side. Even count now, one and one. Karen Bowles, as Andrew said, is a one-on-one -on -one count, just like number 11 on the back of the sweater. Hey, there we go. Uh, he hesitated, a good hesitation, a good look by Bowles, makes 2-1 the count. A very exciting game indeed to come back on. And I'm really hoping that the fans are enjoying this tonight. Bowles gets settled in to take the fourth pitch of that bat. Second base runner with quite the lead. That's another strike, two and two, Kieran Bowles. You know he wanted that one to be a ball. Oh, yeah, yeah. As he jumped around and just kind of like clap, and now he's got a tremendous amount of pressure. He's very eager. He's very anxious right now, and I can tell. Yeah. But he's just taking that breath right now. Pitch by pitch. Pitch by pitch. He's taking a deep breath here. Taking that little oh, okay. chopper. Will, will it get there? And bobbles. He will get there. Oh, bobble by the pitcher. Runners on the corners now with Jeremy Fayou. The designated hitter, number 12, Jeremy Fayou. Not gonna lie, fans, it's uh it's quite late and actually cold right now, but I think the body temperature is on. We're we're good and we're gonna we're gonna probably plug a second fan in. You know, <laughs> when there is a mouth visit for the Gulf Oils pitcher, if we don't know if it's gonna stick it in. Thank you. Uh, are, looking to... are they warming up? I can't see down there. They are warming up a guy down there. Probably for hopefully that's getting for that. That's what they would want. They don't want to have to bring him in here in the bottom of the eighth and then warm up another guy, but they can't get him out here. It looks like they might have to do that here. This is not, it's not even that or one more conception. Let's have been able to find the zone. He's been fine there. It's just the one building play. And as I say that, they will keep him into the game this uh, next battle. So, Jeremy is expected. He's up next to the Red Sox with two outs. Ducks on the corner. A recent rhyme by Gus Wilson. 
First pitch over the backstop fence. And again, folks, if you're half asleep and you're watching which, the live Which, stream, how can you be? Yes, how can you be? But sorry if you're expecting a quiet commentary game to Not tonight with what's happened so far. And we still got a full inning. It goes for that one. That's a strike. It's all in two. Apparently, the U, it comes down to this to keep the inning going for the Red Sox. This next inning uh, portion coming up to now will be huge for the Red Sox so they can keep it tight defensively. Again, as we said earlier, positive half look. Attempts to swing, and he did not go. Well, bench, obviously, I. Uh, Disappointed with that call. He's hoping to get themselves out of a jam here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think even the golf bench knew though that that one. Yeah, yeah. definitely, it did not break clean. So if it doesn't break break clean, it's not a it's not a full fledged uh, strike here. Well, that's that's not, that, that one that's is a full fledged strike. strike. Yes, yes, yes. Unfortunately, that's a full fledged strike. That will end the eighth inning. Red Sox going to the top of the ninth inning. If they can get it done here, that'll be another win for the Bramford Red Sox. As it would be a comfort behind victory as they were down six, sorry, five. And folks, we'll be right back with that top of the ninth inning in just a couple of moments. I'm Andrew. And I'm Nick. Let's go, Sox. And it's Christmas in July. David Mendham now leading things off for the Royals in the top of the ninth. If the Brantford Red Sox can get three outs, that will be the ball game. Yes, sir. Daniel Lapp back out there for the ninth inning. First one could have been a strike, but called the ball. 1 0 the count. Nice fly ball opportunity here to get an easy first out. Tough play for Justin Murray. Unfortunately, not able to make that foul ball grab. One and one the count. Umpire looks to be hit. 
We got a one-two count now after that foul ball came back and hit the umpire. Back pressure in, you know, a little bit of a tap to the umpire to check in, see that he's okay. It's the second time, too, the umpire's been hitting that mask. Mm -hmm. That mask has certainly done its job. It is one and two here. Ugh. High fastball, called ball. Danny Boy putting everything into these pitches right now, as I, I would imagine that he just wants to get this done in over with. It's called a game. Another little foul ball. Danny Watt's certainly doing his job right now. It's just a batter. He's just taking out a piece. And... He's batter's fighting. We'll give him that. Mm -hmm. Remember, you and I, man, we would be struck, you know, struck out at this point. It was you and I. Two pitches. Not two pitches. Not even three. Yeah. Couldn't, we wouldn't get that far. No, I'd be like, whatever. <laughs> nice little rip out to right field. That, that gets just a little bit by the right fielder. He throws it in. It's a double for the Royals. We're on second base here for Guelph. Lot, Nobody away. Lots of noise coming from the Royals bench now. That's nice. has been brought to the base in number 35, Malik Colomar. Runner on second for the Royals. It is a 6-5 game for the Red Sox. That one's in for a ball. Malik Collymore. Fouls that one back. It is now one and one. Danny Watt is really doing everything that he can right now just to put some strikes over the plate. And like I said, these batters are relentless and they they have the almost a hate to lose mentality. Yeah, about both these teams pitching, defense, and hitting. And there's a nice clean strike. It's one and two count. None away. Top of the night. Six five Red Sox here at Little Anderson Stadium, where it's Christmas in July. <laughs> First out, I'll be inning. It worked. The clapping worked. As unbiased as we we're supposed to be. We didn't clap, though. 24, we Justin right. Garasano. No, we didn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We didn't clap. It was our PA and scorekeeping crew that were clapping. With, yes, some excitement. The crew up here. And again, folks, this might be a turning point here, but the lefty-lefty matchup's back. It is. Justin fouls that one back. Going one count. One and one. The second base runner trying to make some noise out there, but Danny Watt clearly in the zone only cares about going after the batter. Yeah, right? he's they're dancing over there trying to get into Howard's head. It's not working. No, it's not. 
Two and one to count. Look at that. Two and one to count against Justin to the Royals. One away, one on second. Takes that for a little ride to center field. And he gets it! And the Red second out! The Red Sox need one more to claim victory for six games. And if that's the case, I'm returning for tomorrow's game. And that will make it three wins in a row for your Brantford Red Sox. Well, and for those of you that just joined, the reason why I say that I'll be returning tomorrow if they win is because tonight, if uh, if they had lost and uh, you know they were in a two win uh, winning streak, well, the obvious common denominator between all their losses is that I've attended my games. So, do I want to be the bad luck charm for you guys for this season? No, not really. But, uh, yeah, heck, even if they did, I would still come back. Just oh, yeah, we'd sure. allow you back, too. I appreciate a, that, Andrew. I really do. As the pitching coach has come out here for Brantford. Yeah, the, I'm still looking to get this thing going here, as there's one batter here that's looking to get into the box. I think it's number 28. Even the golf hitter. Wants to get things going. Like, hey, let's go, let's go. Well, you must be very anxious to get things going. Oh, absolutely. Hammond right now. It's in Hammond. Yes, Ethan Hammond now for the Royals. A lot throws the first one. It's a strike one. Two more. That's all that's needed. Danny Owag is really lasered focused on getting to the batter right now. He doesn't even care about the second base runner out there. Throws this one. Is it in there? Nope. It's one and one to count. He is like rapid firing on these pitches right now, just trying to get this this at bat over and hopefully secure the victory for the Red Sox. Wow. Practice left center field. That's going back. Amen. Well, full score run. Game is tied at six apiece. But you know what would be exciting is that Brant forgets his last down. You can go to the bats. And the first guy that goes up. Yeah. Number 23, Brandon. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying. Running keys now up for the Royals with a runner on second. Danny Wack giving the guy a second of luck, but going out to the batter anyways for a strike. D two more to get out of this. Oh, so then we count now. Oh and one. That's right. Hi. Call ball. Hi, slider right there. Still so the second baseman, that's being thrown in. Game. Ralph has taken the lead, seven six. And Guelph has now taken the seven to six lead. Left fielder number nineteen, Chris Robbins. Yes. 
Let's now seven to six for the Gulf Royals here in this top the ninth inning. Runner on first base, two away. Number 19, Curtis Robinson up to the plate here for Guelph. There's the off-speed swinging strike there, 1-1. One one. And now for a little bit off-speed right there, 1-2. and two. And the one, two. Foul back right there. Count stays one and two. And just taking a look at the rest of the season schedule. After tonight's game, there will be only eight more home games. So playoffs. Sad times. Sad times indeed. Daniel Watt looking to get settled in to get this last out to get to the bats here for Brantford. Two and two of the count. Even count here, two and two. Two and two with two away. Runner on first base. Second baseman number ninety eight, Kyle Cush. Kyle Cush. Off to the box for the Royals. Number nine hitter. I'll be back at the top. The batting list for Guelph keeps going on, but hopefully a nice uh, force play. Out here would be nice to get Danny Lott out of the pins right now. Like we said all night, the umps have been very consistent on their strike zone. It's just, uh, you know, when, when you think it should be one, it's not. For good reason. Yep. It's called on both sides, really. That's a strike right there. It's one and one to count against Kyle Cush. It's one of the few times tonight where the ump has fallen for the little catcher's job there. He fell for that one there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's not really character life of him to do so because he hasn't yep. been buying these train jobs all night long. So it is. You can frame uh, that next two, pitch up two and one. Exactly, two and one. As you can kind of feel the energy die down a little bit in the stadium after Guelph goes up one run, seven, six. Now. Hopefully we didn't talk about winning too much. That one's high. Don't worry. Another ball, three and one. Kyle Cush up on the count, three and one. Daniel Watt still looking to settle in here on this half back. That'll be another walk. The bases are loaded for the Guelph Royals now. As J.D. Williams will be up next for the uh, Royals. A mound visit is being made by the Brantford manager.
Ash. Please. Now pitching for the Brantford Red Sox, number 84, Kyle Nash. Kyle Nash only needing two more, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Christmas in July. J.D. Williams. J.D. Williams now face off against Kyle Nash here. A.K.A. Christmas sleeve. Yes, Christmas sleeve. This will be what? This fifth or sixth at that? This is the sixth time I've said Christmas sleep. So, uh, so yes, number six. Okay. All right. Time for Kyle Nash to do what he does. Oh, that's in there for a solid strike. All one to count. Damn. Wow. Be quite nice to see Kyle Nash get the Grand Red Sox out of a pickle here as. It is 7-6 for the Royals. Bases are loaded. One to walk and one to hit the batter. Really hoping to go back to the bats and get the offense going. Just need two. Okay, well, and then Brantford will have the meat of the order coming up in the bottom of the night. Oh, that's good. Oh, down in the dirt. Two and one. Needs to settle in here as he's down in the count three and one to JD Williams with bases loaded. He takes a smack out here. That's going to land foul down that wow. right side. Let me get to my favorite count of mall. Payoff. Let's count. This will be the most important payoff of the game. Oh, Kyle Nash with the payoff. And he's set. Delivery of the pitch in three, two, one. That one's fouled off there. Count's going to stay full. Green two. J.D. Williams certainly putting on a battle up at the batter's box against Kyle Nash. And he's going to swing at anything close to you. Oh, know. yeah. He he had a feel for it when it went foul there, but if that had stayed straight, then that would have done some damage to the scoreboard for sure. I'm not meaning by it hitting. <laughs> foul back and he fouled back, back again. Staying alive in the battle box. J.D. Williams. Runners got to go back to their respective bases. Oh, Runners will be going on this pitch. And every other pitch throughout this inning. Or at least throughout this at that. Right. Lightly straightening it out, but still foul. And that is long gone into the parking lot. Almost hit a car down there in the parking lot. And again, these runners are in motion. They're, they're going. Oh, yeah, they want to go. Every, every pitch and miss at bat, runners will be going. You can even see a guy on second, way off the bag there at second. He wants to go, go, go. Exactly. Runner on, runner on third will not be running here. Oh! And that's going to be a ball. 
That's going to walk in a run, and it's now eight to six for the Gulf Royals. You need three runs to win if you get another run. Short side number two, Connor Morrow. Connor Morrow now for the Royals. Come Morrow, don't miss. This is still loaded for the Guelph Royals after that latest walk. Which, as Andrew said, brought in another run to make it 8 6 well. The top of the ninth inning. Ranford desperately needing to get an out here and to get back to the sticks, get some offense going. Wow. 9 6 now for the Guelph Royals. As the game has taken a dramatic turn for the worst for the Red Sox. First baseman number 40, David Mendo. Base is still loaded, another run being scored by the Gulf Royals. We got a 1 0 count here. That's that one's in there, 1 1. See framework being done by the back catcher, Karen Bowles. Again, like we said, he's going to make the theme of tonight. I'm sorry, fighting. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you're right, Nick. I'm sorry, fighting tonight. And they've been pretty overall consistent throughout the zone tonight. Maybe a couple of pitches that he, he would, he would not been call a strike just because of what they've been calling. But other than that, every umpire is always going to, exactly. you know, they're going to make their mistakes like that. But. But tonight they seem to be really consistent, which you know it's on a, both sides. It's both an sides odd and both thing. sides don't like it. Exactly. And <laughs> it's an odd thing too, because not normally is it that you can say enough so inconsistent. Right. Right. That's a far thing. That's gonna be ball three. Full count. Payoff pitch to come. I'll let Andrews do the uh the uh honors trip <laughs> pitch call here. <laughs> Three, two, it's in. Yeah. That one's good. gonna be fouled right back. Count stays full here. Three, two. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's a ground ball heading over to second. Nakamura makes a play there, and that's going to be the third out. We'll be right back as we go to the bottom of the night. Well, that sucks baseball. We have still left on base. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And we're back with Lost Night Minning. It's now 9 for 6 for Animal Center. We're going to park uh, in the, the top of the night for Red Sox. And then for that, it's leading things off here in the bottom of the night. Nice little poke, a little shift to first. Do that first out of the inning. Christian to Zemsha now coming up. Thank you, little friend of ours, Zemsha. Zemsha. Christian right? Kazemka now up. He's looking to make something work here for the Brantford Red Sox. And then for that, it was a ground out to first. To be the first out with the inning. He goes after that first one, fouls it back. It's 0 1. Kazemka trying to shake some things out right here. Base it, grounded up to left field there. We're trying to get first. Number 17, Nick Bailey. Now that is. The third four, having a lion. Ryan now batting. Ransford Red Sox. Pinch runner. Uh, not runner. Pinch runner first. And Ryan looks to make a difference here. Very almost high pressure situation here to try to get something going for the red. Lose out on that first one. It's a popped up uh, ball. Second baseman's trying to field this one. Will he get it? He will for the second out of the inning. Yes, I he was sorry for what I'm seeing. Sure, thank you guys. Play for me. The J for the Red Sox, number 55, Tyler Wilson. Tyler Wilson. We'll take the game alive for the Red Sox. Red Sox. Wilson. Gets hit. He will go to first. Runners at uh, first and second. This could be an opportunity for Red Sox to blow it open here. There's Jesse Fishbaum now. Number 20, Jesse Fishbaum. Jesse Fishbaum coming up to the plate here. Two away, two guys on. Here's another guy. I don't want to. Put it out there, but this is the guy with a home run this year. Yes. And you know what, too? Like, some people break on pressure with some diamonds. And I'm really hoping that tonight's case that Jesse rises to the occasion and says, listen here. Like, Even if he doesn't, like, just get on base, get extend on base. the inning. Extend yeah. the inning. It's all you can do if you're Jesse. Just put the ball in play. Or a nicer situation would be is if you give him score two runs on a two. <laughs> and uh, so well for a little bit. They wanted they wanted that strike call. They wanted that one. A lot of them are fired up that they're coming back from a one run deficit in the top of the uh, ninth with uh, three uh, three runs. Now it's 9 6 Royals, bottom of the ninth. Jesse Fish bombs up and two away. One and one the count. Leaving that one for a ball. Two and one the count. Runners on first and second. Two away. Fish bomb making the pitcher work for his strikes today. I do.
takes that for a ride, goes foul over the Gulf Royals dugout. Counts even now at two and two. Brantford are down to their final strike. Jesse Fishbaum taking the extra few seconds here and taking a few more deep breaths here before resuming back in the batter's box um, as a signal to through the pitch. And that's the game. It is 9 6. Well, well, fans, if it's my return, I've okay. done it. I want to apologize to the fans. It wasn't you, Nick. It's okay. It's July. It's, 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 it wasn't you, Nick. Don't let it be. It's from England's first pitch. But, anyways, fans, I want to apologize from 12th for tuning in and the ones here from Brantford for tuning in. Uh, next game for the Red Sox is tomorrow night, 8 o'clock start here at Arnold Anderson Stadium against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I'll let you guys know as well what your next game is. If we can find it. Uh, yeah, just give me a second here, folks. Uh, let's do... Well, Foils, let's go to see the schedule. It is... I believe they have to play. So tomorrow they play at 7.30 p.m. It's at East Stadium, a home game. When you guys are host to dish with Panthers, that's a 7 p.m. start. We thank everyone for tuning in to a wild ride of a game. And for Andrew and I, I think it's our first time as broadcasters that we've had broadcast a bench clearing yeah. for both Guelph and Brantford. A little bit of an excitement, but also some very nervous moments uh, for both fans and players. So, anyways, we want to thank everyone for tuning in. It's been a wonderful night for baseball here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. My name is Nicholas Moss. And I'm Andrew Owen. And until next time, we'll see you and we'll look forward to having you guys back here tomorrow. And let's go, Sox! Tonight was Christmas in July. Thank you and have a great rest of your night. Let's go, Red Sox.